Southern Illinois' Jerry Kill is getting a lot of love these days, and his team, the Salukis, are dancing into the Gateway Football Conference season as they open up conference play with the highest scoring offense in the country, led by quarterback Nick Hill, as the Salukis start the conference season on the road against Indiana State. Indiana State Sycamores this week let go their head coach Lou West. We'll see what the Sycamores can bring forth today as they're at home against Southern Illinois. It's the Salukis, it's the Sycamores, it's our Gateway Football Conference Game of the Week. It is a picture-perfect day for football here in the Hoosier State as we open up the Gateway Football Conference season in Terre Haute, Indiana, as Indiana State hosts Southern Illinois today. Hello, everyone, along with Daily News. I'm Scott Warman. Glad to have you alongside. We initially thought Southern Illinois, with their start, was going to be the story of this football game. That's not the case. Indiana State, let's go. Their head football coach, Lou West, is out Dennis Rates is in, Dana. Well, Lou West did an admirable job. He was 1-25 in, in his tenure, and the fact remains that you have to look elsewhere when you have that kind of record. He has a son on his team, and he definitely cares about these players. He's here today, which is unheard of, but the fact remains is that you have to look down the hall. Dennis Rates steps in as the interim coach. Let's see how he can do. And he was a previous coach here at Indiana State. It is his first game and also his quarterback's first start today. Yes, D Dodell is going to step in, and what you look for in a quarterback is a spark, and he he definitely lifted them up last week against Eastern Illinois. He stepped in down 20 to 0 before halftime, comes in out of halftime 27 20 down. So he can deliver that spark that they need, and he's a playmaker with his legs and with his arms. Speaking of sparks, Southern Illinois has quite an offense. They have quite a spark, and it starts with their quarterback. Yeah, you know, Nick Hill is a big lefty that can make plays with his legs and his arms. He is leading this team, lead, almost leading the conference in, in the country with his pass efficiency. 11 touchdowns, zero interceptions. That tells the story. That does tell the story, but they're also their running game's pretty darn good too. Oh yes, I always call it the three-headed monster. <laughs> you, you you got the uh, the big running backs there with John Randall. You got Kareem and you got Werner. What more can you ask for? Uh, Kareem is a great running back that can get downhill running, and then obviously John Randall is the playmaker that's going to be out here today. And John Randall with an angle injury will play in today's game. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll have the opening kickoff of this one. It's the Sycamores. It's the Salukis. Our kickoff is next. Welcome back to Terre Haute, Indiana. It is our Gateway Football Conference Game of the Week. Let's head down to the sidelines and Mick Schaefer. Mick? Scott Danon, how are you guys doing? You know, for the fourth straight week, this is a conference that has put five teams in the top 25. And the trick is there, just 10 times in conference history has it happened, and it's happened all throughout the September month of 2007. Taking a look at the FCS top 25. At number four, it is UNI. At number six, it is Southern Illinois, Youngstown State in at 10. 28 times in conference history, three teams have been ranked in the top 10, Western Illinois and Illinois State as well for the Salukis guys oh well, they've been ranked 56 straight weeks all right Mick thank you very much Dana and that is no doubt an impressive record that Jerry Kill has put together here at Southern Illinois yes it is and, and, and the fact remains that he came out last year started out strong ended nine and four the year before that nine and four so he's off to a great start right now and he hopes to keep it going this week as we are set for the kickoff, as you can tell, Southern Illinois, that is Kyle Doherty. He will be doing the kickoff chores for the Salukis as Indiana State with their new head coach, Dennis Rates, will get the football first here in this afternoon's game. And we are underway with the Gateway Football Conference season. And it's not the start that the Salukis would like as Doherty kicks the ball out of bounds. And so Indiana State will start on their first possession of today's game with terrific field position with the kick going out of bounds. Yeah, you definitely don't want to have that. I mean, you want to announce yourself with authority when you come on the road, especially as solid a team as the Saluki team is. You don't want to give the other team any kind of incentive. Let's see how they can rebound on defense. They've been making plays all year on this defensive front. There you see the starting quarterback, the freshman, his first start, as we mentioned in the outset. 
Charles Dottle as we take a look at the starting offense for Indiana State. And Dottle, there you see some of his stats. And as Dana mentioned, an impressive appearance in last week's loss to Eastern Illinois. He'll start out in the shotgun on this first and 10. And in our first play, he's going to go back to pass. And it is incomplete. And be a second down as we take a look at the starting offensive line for the Sycamores in today's game. Matt Winger, he is a 6'7", 310-pound junior. Part of that offensive line, the backs and receivers. We see Brian McCulley, who had 94 yards rushing in our last week's game. And the four wide receivers set as they are set up on this second down for Indiana State. And McCulley's going to get the handoff, and he'll get out to about the 37-yard line for a gain of two yards. And let's take a look at that Saluki defense. And we'll start things off with that defensive line. Preseason all-conference Andre Tillman is in the middle. Chauncey Mixon, we'll talk about him. He had a terrific game last week. Brandon Jordan is out in today's game. And there you see the defensive backs. A lot of conversation today on Craig Turner, Dana. He's one of the best in the business in the football championship subdivision. Yes, he is. He's a big playmaker on that corner. But the other side with Williams, obviously with the big interception return last week one, or a couple four, weeks three, ago, six. they have playmakers in that defensive backfield. A little clock problem right now, Danon, as they try to get it set up here. And speaking of setting up, Indiana is set up with a third down from their own 38-yard line. Opening possession of today's game between Indiana State and Southern Illinois. And Odell feeling the pressure, and he is sacked for a loss. James Cloud picks up his second sack of 2007 on that third down. And let's see the pressure once again, Danon. Well, I tell you what, he comes great off the corner and is able to do his job, keep his outside shoulder free, and make the play on the quarterback. A lot of times when you have this wide open offense, you have that motion that actually triggers the defensive end to rush. And so it takes away a little bit from the actual play calling or, or the uh, snap count. Chris Johansson set to do the punting chores, feels a little bit of pressure, gets it off. And here is Craig Turner, one of the most dangerous return men in the country. He'll get the Salukis into terrific field position on their first possession of today's game at the 47-yard line, a 37-yard punt and a 14-yard return as we take a look at that offense for the Salukis. And it starts with their quarterback, as we mentioned before, Danon. It's Nick Hill, the senior quarterback, who took over for Joel Zamberski uh, uh, last year. Yeah, and he's a great play. And obviously, he has 87 yards to reach 1,000. And we're only in week five right now. So he's shown he can make the plays downfield. And, and you have a great leader in him as well. John Randall, as you see there, is starting at tailback for the Salukis this afternoon as they have a first and 10 from the Indiana State 47. Randall gets the call, and he'll make his way out to the 43-yard line for a gain of four. Let's check out that Sycamore defense here this afternoon for Dennis Reitz in his first game back as coach of Sycamores. And we start with that 3-3-5 defensive line. Kevin Wilson starting at that left defensive end position for the Sycamores, the linebackers. Chris Mobley is a good one, along with Brandon Pence in the middle. And that defensive back, as we mentioned, five in the back. Field. Ryan Patrick also returns kicks. DeAndre Lott getting the start at safety for the Sycamores. Second and six from the shotgun. Hill, oh, in and out of the hands of Phil Goforth as he had it right between the numbers and the incompletion now forces a second down. Well, it's unfortunate because when you have receivers like this, you want to teach your receivers to catch the ball with their hands. I always tell people you got 10 good reasons to catch the ball, and those are those 10 fingers. Go for it, allowed it to get into his chest. He had a lot of space between he and the cornerback. Could have made a big play. Unfortunately, they're now in third and long. Third and six for the Salukis from the Indiana State 43. Justin Turner checking into the game. Hill's going to roll out to the right, and he unloads it wide open with the catch is Allen Turner, and he's going to be shoved out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. And it's a big third down conversion for the Salukis there, Danon. Big time play by the big quarterback and the great, great wide receiver. But you have the three receivers set. And as you can see, you only have two defensive backs in the picture. Right there is a mismatch. Quarterback Hill was able to find the mismatch and make the big play downfield. Alan Turner 
as we see there on the reception, gets to the 16-yard line. He's one of the top receivers, the senior for the Salukis. In the red zone territory for SIU, this is a first down handoff to Randall. It's a big hole inside the 10, very close to another first down for Southern Illinois, as in on the stop was Brandon Pence. Great job up front by the offensive line, open up holes. Two running plays that they've had in this drive where they've had very good holes for that running back to get through. And that's what you want to see is a mixture of offense or in the passing game and the run game. And right now, the Salukis are doing a great job. Justin Turner is the receiver split to the near side. Bottom part of your screen. Double tight end set on this third and one. Randall gets his name called once again. He'll get the first down. He gets down to the three for a three yard gain for the Salukis. This is just power football right here, Dean. Exactly. You have to like just the general nature of the Saluki offense and what their approach is right now. They're just going to line up in the eye, one wide receiver or a tank formation, and just try to smash it down your throat. Nothing tricky, just keeping everything basic, and, and we're just winning fundamental football. Saw so Coach Kill there on the sidelines. Let's see if he keeps it basic. He has three backs behind Hill. Randall gets the call once again, and a nice play there defensively by Indiana State. And that's no gain right there, Dean, and that's good pursuit by that Indiana State defense. Yes, and, and people might question the three running back backfield, and uh, but what it tells you is that it's definitely going to be a run play, and they get great pressure up front. And what you want to do is get around those big blocks that are coming at you. You can see the ball as a defensive player make the play on their side of the side on their side of the line of scrimmage. Nate Brown, the nose tackle, with a terrific play. He's kind of the anchor of that defensive line for the Sycamores. Now it is third and goal for Southern at the Indiana State three. Randall once again pushing forward, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Salukis. Great play up front, and you have to like Coach Kill and his play calling. Three running plays inside the five-yard line. That's showing confidence in your offensive line and your playmakers in the backfield. John Randall into the end zone. John Randall picking up his seventh touchdown of 2007 for the Salukis. And look at this interesting formation, Danon, as they're going to try to go for two. It's a pass. It is complete. Oh, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver down there. And so the two-point conversion is to no avail. So opening stages of this first quarter here of our Gateway Football Conference Game of the Week, John Randall with the three-yard touchdown run. Salukis are up by six. Time now to take a look at the football championship series. Top 25 for this week, as you see, Montana with 21st place votes is number one. But look at three representatives from the Gateway Football Conference, Northern Iowa number four, Southern Illinois, who we see today at 4-0, Youngstown State at 3-1. In fact, those two teams at 4-0, it's the first time this deep in a season that that has happened in the Gateway Football Conference. More representatives from the Gateway Football Conference, Illinois State at number 16, Western Illinois 3-1 as we round out the top 25 of the football championship season. Now let's take a look at the preseason poll and Northern Iowa, the Gateway Football Conference. Rated number one, followed by Illinois State. There we see Southern Illinois with one first place vote, followed by Western Illinois, Missouri State, rounding out the seven in the Gateway Football Conference, Indiana State. Welcome back to Terre Haute, Indiana, our Gateway Football Conference Game of the Week. As you see Southern Illinois up on Indiana State by six. And here was the big pass play here, Danon, as you see the trips up top. Yeah, and ultimately what you have is trips by the wide receiver set, but you only have two defensive backs in the pitcher. Obviously the third one comes too late, but what you want on a defensive front, especially in the defensive backfield, is you want to have at least four to their three, and they didn't accomplish that. And then John Randall follows suit a few plays later on the three-yard touchdown run. And then this was interesting, a two-point conversion, and the holder, Justin Allen, who's also a wide receiver, handles a bad snap, trying to catch Indiana State off guard. The pass was there but it goes incomplete, and that's where we stand 
at six to nothing right now. And again, in that swinging gating, we may see that again because uh, the Salukis do that quite often. It's also a mismatch situation. So if you have three guys on your side to their three guys, you can expect them to fake it again. Doherty does a much better job this time on the kickoff, and Patrick's going to let it go in the end zone, and it's going to be a touchback. And so Indiana State on their second possession of this afternoon's game will start out at their own 20-yard line. Patrick, a little indecisive on that uh, kickoff return. And, and that sun, we were down there a little bit earlier. That sun's really bright. Yeah, it is. But the fact remains that you have to make some plays. You have a strong team that you're playing against, and, and you're behind. You have some coaching issues. All these different things factor in that, that this team, this Sycamore team, needs to come out stronger and want to announce themselves. And, and that was an opportunity. But like you said, maybe the sun got in his eyes. Dowdell, the freshman quarterback, getting his first start back on his second possession from the shotgun once again. Again, now it looks like we have a little change at the line of scrimmage as they're going to run an audible here, Danon. Yes, and, and what you saw was not the audible coming from the quarterback, Dodell. It was actually coming from the sideline. And they're going to swing it out, and it's going to be a one-yard loss. Great pursuit there. Brian Jackson was there on the receiving end. Craig Turner with the open field tackle for Southern Illinois. This Southern Illinois team or defense is a very fast defense. Not very big, especially in your linebacker core, but your defensive backs and your upfront linemen are fast guys. Second and 11 for Indiana State. Dowdell from the uh, shotgun once again. And this time, McCulley gets some room as it gets across the 25 to about the 28-yard line. That's a nice gain of nine yards, and that sets him up with a nice third and short situation, Dana. And that's what you want to have is when you have an offense that's spread out like they are, you want to be able to try to utilize the pass on your first down, but also know and have confidence that you can run the ball downhill to get into a third and short situation. Speaking of short situations, they're going with this no huddle here on this possession. Trying to catch, I think, the Salukis a little off guard with this. Of course, a little uncertainty for Jerry Kill with the new head coach coming in the middle of the season. McCulley gets the handoff. Great pursuit this time by Southern Illinois. Brian can't find any running room whatsoever. Third down conversion is to no avail, and we'll see the punting unit back out on the field for Indiana State as Chauncey Mixon, who had a huge game last week in the victory for Southern Illinois, was there, one of those, on the stop. Well, he's a playmaker, and you're going to see him around the ball quite often today. But what you have in a Sycamore team, especially on the offensive side, is they have to do something to shake things up. They realize that this uh, SIU team is a very good team, a very strong team on defense. So you have to mix things up, get them in shotgun, no huddle, look to your sideline for your audibles for your young quarterback, and do things that might shake things up. Craig Turner, seventh in the nation in punt return yardage, and this punt is blocked. It is picked up by Southern Illinois, and they're going to wind up with terrific field position. There on the block was Matt Speed, who came shooting in and gets the block for Southern Illinois. And when you look at the numbers, boy, I'll tell you what, special teams for Jerry Kill are really good, and we see it right here, Dana. Well, special teams makes the game, and a lot of people overlook special teams play except for the return game, but the fact remains that guys can make plays on special teams and turn the tide. In the first punt, Matt Speed was very close to blocking the punt, and he, able, he was able to make the adjustment and get to the ball that time. Great job by number 41. Interesting call, especially when you have one of the most dangerous punt returners in the entire nation. Obviously, they saw some film, and they saw something that was wide open for Southern Illinois. And that's the key is the film study, and that's what Coach Kill does is he allows his players to be students of the game, utilizes his coaching staff and the film study to give themselves an advantage. On first and goal, Southern trying to push their way into the end zone, and they're going to be stacked up at the half-yard line. Number 61, who's the lead blocker, and that Aaron Lockwood, who's normally a guard, part of that three-back system behind Nick Hill in this short yardage situation that we've seen for the second straight time in as many possessions, Dana. Six foot three, 305-pound offensive lineman in the backfield. No wonder why it took a scrum <laughs> to get him down. <laughs> I'm surprised the referee didn't try to jump in or a couple of people on the sideline to get that big boy down. How would you like to be a linebacker in that situation? <laughs> Second and goal. It's the fullback getting the handoff, and the Salukis are into the end zone. Touchdown as John Hay gets his touchdown for Southern Illinois, and they're up 12-0. Big plays are the, are the name of this game so far. The Salukis have been able to make two big plays, the block punt and the big pass. 
All right, let's see if the swinging gate happens again. That is Rick Burgess, actually, with the carry and the touchdown. Looks like Coach Kill's gonna go for the conventional extra point here. Try to extend the lead to 13 to nothing. Get the points on the board. Alan Turner handles the snap and it's down and it is good. As we take a look at the touchdown once again, Southern Illinois with their second of the afternoon, Burgess with the touchdown, Southern up by 13. Welcome back to Terre Haute, Indiana, as Southern is up by two touchdowns. The second touchdown started with special teams, Dan. Special teams is the most important factor of the game, and you have to be uh, what I say a sandwich short of a picnic, Scott, to be on the special teams because you have to have a screw loose. And I'm speaking from experience, and you know that. You know me. I have a little bit of a screw loose. But you make the plays when you can, and number 41 speed did that. The great thing about that play is that he was so close on the first punt, he was able to make the adjustment, still attack in the same way, and come up with the big play. And you saw the fullback, Rick Burgess, making that one-yard plunge to make it 12-0, and the extra point now makes it 13-0. As you see the second drive for Southern Illinois, and the third kickoff. It's a booming kick, and Patrick will receive it at his own two-yard line. Gets a crease, spins away. Nice dancing by Patrick as he makes his way out the 26-yard line. And this kid's uh, a pretty good return man as well, Dana. Yes, he is. And until the first hit, the great thing about that return is that he was going north and south. And that's what you want to see with a kickoff return guy. Not one that's going to dance around, but somebody that's going to get straight up field. Well, Riley Murphy, the senior, who did not get the start today, and in fact uh, was replaced by Dowdell is now one of the game for Indiana State. We were told about this before the game. That looks like they're going to switch quarterbacks. And now the senior is in for Indiana State on their third possession. And it looks like we have another audible by the sidelines. And Murphy's going to take it himself. He's got a huge hole and a first down. And he'll get all the way to the 28-yard line, a 22-yard gain for the senior quarterback. Great job of taking advantage of that over-aggressive defense. And when you have a defense like the Salukis, who is fast, who like to get to the ball, oftentimes these misdirection plays can work to your advantage. Great spacing, drive a truck through that hole right there. Great job by the quarterback getting upfield, eluding one tackler and making a big play to get near midfield. Riley had 203 yards rushing heading into this game. Last year, he was one of the all-newcomer team in the Gateway Football Conference with over 1,700 yards passing. Sycamores with their first first down on a conversion here in the first quarter. And now a timeout's going to be called by Indiana State as there's some confusion with the play call from the sidelines into the senior quarterback. And you're going to pretty much anticipate that when you've got a new head coach in a new system that uh, you're trying to get acclimated. Yeah, you're going to anticipate that. But the unique thing that you have with this Sycamore team is that the quarterbacks are not necessarily calling the plays at the line of scrimmage. They're getting the plays from the sideline. It's quite unique, but you see it in a lot a lot with these open offenses, wide open offenses, that the sideline is signaling the, uh, the play, and everybody's watching, not just the quarterback. So the receivers are over there. The quarterback does not have to shout anything back out. Uh, it's great in situations when you have uh, a lot of crowd noise, but it's also an opportunity for the coaches or the head coaches and offensive coordinators to control the game a little bit more. As you see Coach Rates and bringing in the senior quarterback Riley Murphy on this third possession of this afternoon's game, and he started out very nicely with a large run, but thanks to that offensive line. Look at that hole, my goodness. Caught him definitely off guard, not thinking big number 10 would get in there and rumble down the field, and he was able to make a big play. And like I said earlier, whether you have number 18 in there or you have number 10 in there at quarterback, what you want when you bring in a new quarterback is a spark. And that's what your quarterback's giving you right now. The other interesting factor when we're talking about Southern Illinois, Brandon Jordan, their all-conference player in the middle, he suffered an injury this week during practice, and Jerry Kill made the game-time decision today to not start his middle linebacker, and so Ryan Patton is starting number 43 in his place. Well, that's the great thing about the Salukis. They have a lot of depth, and it's still early in the season, so uh, you give your guys some rest and, and have them strong for the end. First and 10 for the Sycamores from their own 49-yard line. And this is McCulley getting the call, and he can find absolutely no running room whatsoever. 
as Curtis, Ar Chris Arthurs, excuse me, was there on the stop for the Salukis. And I'm sure Coach Kill told his uh, Saluki defense is that do your job. And that's what coaches try to relay to their players is to do their job, especially on defense. Don't try to do anyone else's job. Don't try to get too far east-west going side to side, but do your job and stay in your gaps. On second and 10, Murphy again from the shotgun. Four receivers. And Murphy's going to unload it this time, and he tries to swing it out to his wide receiver, incomplete to Alex Thomas, the senior wide out. For say third and 10 now for Indiana State. So we take a look at it once again, Danon, and uh, concentration on the wide receiver here. A little bit, but it's, it's a tough throw. You got to realize that even though that's not a far throw for a quarterback, the fact remains that your receiver is turning his shoulders upfield, and that ball needs to be up high where he can catch it in stride. Anything down by the knees is just a tough throw. But as an ex-receiver, anything that touches your hand should be caught. So there's no excuses I'm going to give for that one. And, of course, Coach Rates not liking this with a third and long situation, third and 10 from the Sycamore, 49. Murphy's got some time here, and he'll unload it out in the flat to Gray. Comes up with a reception and a first down as he's wrapped up at the 38-yard line for a 13-yard gain for Indiana State. Big plays by your quarterback, Murphy, stepping in the game, throwing a little twist and turn, but able to get the ball out to the sideline, over the linebacker, and in front of the cornerback. Big play, big first down. Also credit that offensive line, Dana, for giving Murphy that time to find his receiver out there in the flat. Great job up front holding off that Saluki defensive line. Strong Saluki defense. First and 10, Danon, from the Saluki's 38-yard line. First time the Sycamores have been in Saluki territory. Late in this first quarter, Murphy back to pass. He's going to load it deep downfield. Good coverage by Turner, and he comes up with the pick for Southern Illinois. Breaks a tackle, and he's going to carry it out. Remember, he's one of the top return men in the country. There he goes. He's to the 30. He's got some blocks upfield, and he's finally caught from behind at the 48-yard line. Craig Turner with the big pick for the Salukis. Hey, they, they tried to test the All-American guy. They tried to test the big playmaker in the cornerback with a fade route, and he came up with the play. See it once again, Riley Murphy picking up his first pick of 2007. But look at the coverage. Hey, great job by Turner right there, make, being the wide receiver. And that's what you want to teach your, your defensive backs is that they become the wide receivers. When they can squeeze you to the sideline, use the sideline as your number 12 defensive player and able to turn around and make the play better than the wide receiver. That receiver has to do a better job of becoming the defensive back on, a, on, a, on the throw. Hill on first and 10, play action. Look at the time that he has. And he finds Justin Turner underneath. He's got a big gain inside the 20, loses the ball as it goes out of bounds. And we got a penalty flag. And let's go down on the field and check in with Mick Schaefer. Mick? Guys, yeah, well, we're taking a look at this flag here. <laughs> Southern Illinois just champs at turning turnovers into points. That, by the way, was their eighth interception this season. And so far, guys, they're averaging double digits in points off turnovers in this, just their fifth game of the season. So far, 11.3 points off turnovers in their first four games, including 14 against Northern Illinois. Looking to add to that total right here. All right, Mick, thank you very much. Personal foul, roughing the passer on the defense. There was no flag at the end of the play. Ball was fumbled forward out of bounds. Ball is returned to the place of the fumble. Half the distance to the goal line. First down. Wally Wrighton, who is our referee for today's game, explaining the situation there. Norm more times not when you see a flag, isn't that normally where they're trying to mark where the football is at? Especially Dan? on a fumble like that because obviously the fumble cannot advance the ball for the Salukis to pick it up. So they threw the flag down there to spot where the ball was. But what you had is the Sycamore defensive line, a little bit of frustration back there, teeing off on quarterback Nick Hill. Now the officials blowing the whistle and more conversation. Now with that roughing the passer call on Nick Hill, they'll run it half the distance to the goal line from the 18-yard line. So now it's a first and goal situation again for Southern Illinois at the Sycamore nine-yard line. Not a situation you want to be in as a Sycamore. No, not one iota. Nick's going to operate from the shotgun, and he'll hand the ball off to Warner in a nice open field tackle 
as Chris Mobley in on the stop for Indiana State. I tell you what, Indiana State, although they're moving downfield, the, Sy the Salukis are moving downfield, the Sycamores are doing a good job of making some plays inside their red zone. Inside the 20-yard line, they have been making some plays at or behind the line of scrimmage. They're just there too often. One yard loss on the run by Larry Warner as he sees his first action of the afternoon. John Randall back into the backfield on an offset eye with Rick Burgess on this second and goal from the Sycamore 10. He's gonna pass it, unloads it underneath. This is Turner and he's trying to push that pile forward. He can't and Indiana stops him at the two yard line after an eight yard gain on the pass reception by Turner. A great job by Turner getting his shoulders upfield. Up front, they're doing a great job of protecting Nick Hill. Look at this offensive line. They are all in unison right there. Great footwork. That quarterback, I mean, that's lovely. That's heaven for him to be able to sit in that pocket that long in the red zone and be able to throw the ball down field and get it to turn. It's another reason why he doesn't have any interceptions, too. I'm not discrediting that by <laughs> Nick, but he also gets the help from those big guys up front. Now we got a timeout called. And I think the timeout is called by Jerry Kill. He didn't like what he saw from the Indiana State defense, and so he calls the timeout. Let's go back down on the sidelines and check in with Mick. Mick? Guys, you saw the catch right there by Alan Turner, the uh, senior wide receiver out of El Paso, Illinois. That makes it 32 consecutive games that Turner has caught a pass, including 11 the last three years and the last five of his freshman year. That's the last two years and the last five of his freshman year. Mick, uh, the senior wide receiver, doing an exceptional yep. job. He was also uh, Dana, a preseason all-conference uh, member here for the Southern Illinois Saluki. Southern Illinois up 13 to nothing as they've just called the timeout, averaging almost 49 points a game, and they're on that pace already early on here in Terre Haute. Yes, they're starting off strong as they have been all year. They, they show that they can put points on the board and put yards up as well, and when you got protection like this, I mean, anybody can sit back there and find an open receiver. Actually, the receivers were covered had good coverage from the beginning, but because there was so much time for right. Nick Hill, Turner was able to do his job and skirt right into an open area and make the play. There's a senior wide receiver you just saw there, Alan Turner, that Mick just talked about. This is a third down from the Indiana State 2. The pitch, Randall lowers his head, end zone, touchdown Southern Illinois. Great job by Randall getting downhill fast. He was able to take the pitch out wide. Some people believe that that's designed to stay wide, but once you see a crease and you have the instincts like Randall does, you're able to get downhill fast. Watch his footwork here. He's able to see that crease right there, drop his shoulder, and be able to truck right into the end zone. We're also seeing that offensive line pushing guys into the end zone for Southern Illinois. Already in now for the extra point. Try to extend this lead to 20 points here late in this first quarter and he is perfect two for two with extra points they missed a two-point conversion on their first possession and southern now leading 20 to nothing over indiana state as you see john randall there on the bench a happy guy he missed a game a couple of weeks ago but the uh, two of the other three games that he's played this season dane and he has rushed for over 100 yards we talked about nick hill and his success throwing the football but they're also succeeding rushing the football this year too for southern well he's doing a great job and obviously he's a top one of the top running backs in the conference for a reason and they have some great depth behind them so it's it's equally important that he was able to get some rest the other week and rest that sore ankle but he's making some plays out here today and make, making them early but the point that we all have to emphasize is that offensive line and how great a job that offensive line is doing for the quarterback and the run game. Dana let's check back in with our partner Mick Schaefer. Mick? Guys you talked about it, John Randall one of the top running backs in the gateway he's also been before one of the top running backs in the Big 12 in fact he was honorable mention all Big 12 and uh, part of the freshman team uh, when he was with Kansas a few years back. Over a thousand all-purpose yards at KU in 2004. Like I said, an honorable mention pick in the conference as a freshman in 03. Guys, he also had 22 tackles as a cornerback his freshman year. Kind of a do-it-all type player and, it, and we've seen so far in Lawrence and uh, in Carbondale a do-it-anywhere type player. Dana. No doubt about it and a play defensive back as Mick mentioned as well as running back for the uh, Jayhawks back in the day. Hey. Has made the transfer to Southern Illinois 
quite smoothly. That's what you talk, talk about as far as an all-around athlete. This is Ryan Patrick on the return, and he'll be run out of bounds at the 26-yard line. That was Clayton Johnson, the starting safety for Southern, running him out of bounds. And so for this fourth possession of the afternoon and in this first quarter, we'll wait and see who is going to be the quarterback this go around. We saw Dowdell, the freshman, on the first two possessions. Riley Murphy, the senior, was on the last possession. This is the Southern Illinois cheerleaders cheering on their team, and rightly so, a 4-0 start, and they already have a 20 to nothing lead. And Riley Murphy is going to be back in at quarterback on this possession, Danon. Hey, and, and you look at Riley Murphy in that last drive, he did some great things, and unfortunately he had the last interception, but moving the ball downfield, he was very steady. On first down, he'll go underneath, and they'll get a nice Run on this, Jeremy Gray on the receiving end. Picks up uh, 12 on that reception, and they'll move the sticks. And another first down for Indiana State. Great job by the wide receiver. You're going against a zone right here, and you're able to find the hole and attack the ball. What you want to do as a wide receiver is what that wide receiver did making the play was stay friendly to your quarterback. Don't fade upfield and allow those defensive backs to cut under you and make a play on the ball. Definitely looks like the Sycamores have a little bit more rhythm with Murphy running things than Dowdell, at least early on here, Dana. Well, you realize in order to stay with the Saluki team, you have to throw the ball. And right now, Riley's doing a great job of throwing the ball downhill. This is McCulley on the pitch. And boy, the Saluki's defense converged quickly on that one as he picks up about three yards on the carry. But he paid for that, Dana. <laughs> yes, he did. And what you can't coach, and Jerry Kill has been fortunate to, to recruit and inherit speed. And you can coach speed. You can make these guys stronger in the weight room, but you cannot coach speed on the field. It's just instinct and speed that this Saluki defense has right now. Marty Rogers, among others, there on the stop for the Salukis. Second down, and we'll call it seven. A short seven for Indiana State from their own 42. Cully's in the backfield this time with Murphy. And he's going to give the quick pitch to McCulley. Nice moves as he'll get the first down. And Rodgers will wrap him up right at the midfield stripe, but not before a seven-yard gain. And another first down for Indiana State. Watch McCulley on this play. If you watch the replay right here, the shovel pass right up the middle. But the job was done by McCulley reading his block, seeing where his linemen were coming out, and knowing where the crease would be. Realizing also that you're in a long situation, you have to get that first down. But that's a great job by McCulley reading his blocks and being able to play off his play. players. First and 10 for the Sycamores. Right at the 50-yard line. And a quick hit. Oh, what a play. Fantastic. Andre Tillman, the preseason all-conference defensive tackle, just got his big hand out there and just swatted that like a fly. Hey. This Southern Illinois team has some good, solid, athletic defensive linemen between Tillman and Luster. Those guys can make some plays. We saw Luster against Northern Illinois return an interception as well. So these guys can make plays, and they're going to have many opportunities today to do so. Speaking of flies, we may need his help up here. <laughs> <laughs> Second and 10. This is Murphy from the shotgun once again. Saluki showing blitz. Let's see if they do so. Yep, they're coming with it. Murphy holds up, and then he'll unload it, and it's behind his intended receiver, incomplete, as that was Raphael Price. He couldn't come up with the reception. Price, an interesting story as well on that incompletion. He was actually DB and was second in tackles as we see it once again here, Dana. Yeah, and you have the pump fake, and I don't know if that was a pump fake or he was just about to release it and was able to tuck it back. Great control by him to hold on to the ball, but they have to make the plays downfield, and as a wide receiver, the ball needs to touch. If it touches your hands, it should be caught. It's another third and ten now for Indiana State. From the 50-yard line. Here comes the blitz. Murphy's going to have to step up, unloads it underneath, and he finds Jackson, who makes a nice sidestep, but it looks like 
that sidestep's going to make him short of the first down at the 41-yard line. This is decision-making time, and I would go for it right here, Danon, and it looks like the Sycamores are going to do so. Yeah, you definitely have to. I mean, at this point, you're down 20 to nothing. It's the first quarter. You just cannot continue just to surrender to the Saluki defense, getting them the ball. They've shown they can move the ball up and down the field on offense. Quick count, McCulley gets the call and he gets the first down as he gets the two-yard carry inside the 40. They'll move the sticks and the Sycamores will continue on this possession. Good job by Murphy getting up to the line of scrimmage and getting the ball snapped quick. Throughout this game, the wide receivers and the quarterbacks have been checking the sidelines for, for audibles and changes of plays, but this time they caught the Salukis off guard and were able to make the play quickly. Indiana State 6 of 10 on fourth down conversions here in 2007. And on this first down, it's a pitch. And they're running to the near side and run out of bounds. Close to another first down is Justin Collins, the backup running back due to the loss of Tony West. And Collins is going to get another first down or very close to it as we see it once again here, Dana. Great job by the speedy Collins to get downfield quickly. Great blocks outside. The cut block is a great weapon that receivers and the offense has, and obviously no defender wants anybody near their knees. But until they change the rules, Scott, those guys need to be cutting them down as much as possible, whatever it takes to make plays downfield, especially when you're down 20-0. to zero. There you see Brian McKelly, who has 144 yards rushing heading into the game. 94 of those coming in last week's game against Eastern Illinois. We're waiting for the... Sticks to come out to measure and see if Collins got the first down. Now, we mentioned Collins' is backup quarterback, uh, Tony West, who is actually Lou West, the former head coach now at Indiana State, and he does get the first down. Uh, was also the starting running back, but he suffered an injury actually at home. He had a cut on the leg and had 17 stitches. On Tuesday's practice, he actually tried to go. A couple of those stitches ripped up, and so they decided uh, that Tony was a no-go in this conference opener for Indiana State, but apparently... Uh, Tony had a great meeting with Coach Rates, and uh, things are going well. And it, it, interesting situation with Coach Rates coming in here, and Lou West, Danon, uh, still a part of the staff here at Indiana State. In fact, he's here at the game today. Yeah, and that just shows the character of Lou West and how much he cares about the players is that you've never heard of a coach not only get fired in the middle of the season, but be able to still come out and watch the game. And obviously, this Indiana State program allowing him to be up here in the press box and watch it as well. On first down, Collins gets the call straight up the middle, and he's only going to get a couple of yards. A massive white jerseys there in on the stop, and one of those leading the way was 43 Ryan Patton. As we mentioned, he's starting middle linebacker in place of the injured Brandon Jordan. Well, the linebacker core does a, does a great job, and there you have Coach West right there being, a, being able to look on to his team to see if they can fight back and, and decrease this deficit. Well, one thing for a guy who's uh, sticking with it after being let go right in the middle of the season, uh, class is the first thing that comes to my mind with Coach Lou West. Second and eight could be the final play of the quarter, and they're going to swing it out to Thomas. It'll be run out of bounds at the 22-yard line for about a five-yard gain. Great job by the Sycamores taking what the defense gives you. When you have an aggressive defense like the Salukis, you want to be able to, you don't want to take any chances, unnecessary chances. Right here, you're taking exactly what the defense gives you. If they're going to give you a swing route and five-yard gain, you take it all day long. No huddle once again here, Danon, as they're... Uh, Picking up the pace. This is a third and three, and they're going to swing it out to Collins. He sidesteps the tackler, gets a first down as he gets all the way to the 15-yard line on another seven-yard gain for the Sycamores. They're doing a great job during this drive, again, of taking what the defense is giving you. Swing routes. They realize that there's a weakness right now through their film study, through the coaches' preparation for this game, is that they believe that they can get the ball to their guys quickly in the backfield or around the line of scrimmage and make the plays downfield. No need to take those long, uh, go those long routes and take the long pass plays and, and throw a chance of cornerbacks like Turner picking it off. First and 10 from the Saluki 16, and Justin will get the call once again and finds absolutely no running room whatsoever. He is stacked up right at the line of scrimmage once again for no gain. Salukis have done a great job up front of 
clogging those gaps in the run game. Now they all, all they have to do on defense is figure out a way to get sideline to sideline and slow down those swing routes, and they'll do all right. As we wind down this first quarter of play in our Gateway Football Conference Game of the Week, it has been all Southern Illinois. The highest scoring team in the nation has put 20 on the board as they lead 20 to nothing after the first 15 minutes here in Terre Haute. Back here live on Gateway Conference football. Terre Haute, Indiana, where the score is in the second quarter, 20 to nothing, Southern Illinois over Indiana State. We're joined by former Sycamore great, former NFL defensive back, Vincey Glenn. Vincey, you're in a time warp here. You come back and your old coach is on the sidelines. <laughs> yeah, I never thought I'd see Coach Race on the sidelines again, but uh, it's something that I think is good for the program under the circumstances, and I, I think he'll uh, instill a little tradition back in this program and uh, until they can bring in the right uh, successor. Well, big play here for your Indiana State offense. Yeah, it's crucial that our offense get rolling and uh, get some points on the board. And uh, we got to get some blocking, though. You know, blocking always helps, but we need to get back in this game, some kind of way to put some points on the board. Definitely giving the defense a rest, and that'll help. So where are you at these days? Well, I'm in San Diego. I have my own development company, and it's, it's going well. I'm building buildings. I never thought I'd build buildings, but I'm building buildings, and uh, it's going real well. You, of course, were here uh, as part of the glory days, as you put it to me. You built the glory days back in the back in the mid-'80s. What do you make of the uh, the program right now, kind of undergoing some changes and going through some tough times? Well, it's like anything. If you don't put a little nurturing and caring into it, 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 can, it can dwindle and down on you a little bit, and I think our program has suffered a little bit. Uh, for whatever reasons are unknown, but uh, I think it's time we get this program back. Uh, it's a great program. It's a lot of tradition. you got a lot of guys that want to come back and be a part of it. So I, I think they're on the right. Uh, Pettyman and uh, Bert, uh, Brett Burchett have uh, done a great job of getting older guys back and involved in the program and the boosters and former alumni coming back. And uh, it's growing, but it's a long way to go, and it's a work in progress. I was going to say, what, what is it going to take? Is it going to be those things? How long of a process is that before you get them back to play? Well, anything, be believing. You have to believe in something to build it. And uh, uh, I think they got the right guys that believe in the program and that want to make it better and they're doing the right things. But it's just about it's time and getting the right players and getting the parents and the, and the school and, and the faculty and the staff behind the program as well. Pass is broken up there by Southern Illinois. Now you want to do you want to do color for Gateway games. That's that's your lifelong goal, right? Uh, I like to do. I love football. My passion is college football. I uh, really pros you can have, but you know, talking about things, young men helping young men out and guiding them and doing good things about this conference that's so dear to me. Uh, it'd be nice. Well, Dana's probably asleep right now. If you want, you can take over and do do a little play-by-play -play or some color of this play right here. You, well, want? you know, it's a kicking game. I really don't. Oh pay no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you still got to do special teams. It's got to be every unless play. Unless they're going to play like LSU did last year. That's pretty fancy, right? Field goal is good. <laughs> oh, very accurate. Very accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you listen to the crowd. Thanks so much for your time. Well, we appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, more to come here on Gateway Conference Football Live from Terre Haute. Score now 20-3. to We're back after this. Welcome back to Municipal Stadium here in Terre Haute, Indiana. Our Gateway Football Conference Game of the Week. First telecast of the season along with Mick Schaefer, Dana Hughes, Scott Warman. Glad to have you alongside as Indiana State gets on the board. They trail the sixth-ranked Southern Illinois Salukis by a score of 20 to 3, opening stages of this second quarter of play. As Corey Barnador will uh, do the kickoff chores. He connected on the field goal for Indiana State. Cut that lead to 17 points. Much needed field goal. Great job by Varnador to get the points on the board. Get that egg off their, off their side and, and be able to put some points against this strong Saluki defense. This is Craig Turner, the dangerous Craig Turner, breaking some tackles, going up the gut, trying to get outside, and he's not going to do it. Good pursuit at the end there by Indiana State, but Craig makes a nice return out to the 42-yard line. It is a 34-yard return for Turner, as we see the blocking up in front of him here, Dana. And obviously, as an old sport, uh, special teams guy, this is one of the prettiest sights that I like to see is the spacing from the up front line and the wedge right there. Craig Turner has nowhere but to go right behind those four big guys to be able to make the play. And as you can see, as a great return man as he is, all you need is a little bit of a crease for him to burst through and make the big play. Saluki's seventh in the nation coming into this afternoon's contest in kickoff returns. We mentioned 
how good they are on special teams, among other things, especially offense. And here we have a connection and a, another first down for the Salukis as Nick Hill hooks up with one of his wideouts for another first down. It's amazing to watch number 17, Nick Hill, be back there. He, is, he has such control over this game, such control over this offense. He has confidence in all of his playmakers, and he's able to distribute the ball equally across the board to make plays and obviously put points on the board. Back into Sycamore territory for the Salukis once again. They are three for three on offensive possessions here this afternoon against Indiana State. And this is a handoff. And this is Kareem, and he's got some room. He's got a first down. He'll get a stiff arm, and he's run out of bounds at the 26-yard line. And we have a late flag after the run out of bounds. I tell you, you have a great one-two punch or even a one-two-three punch with Randall and Kareem. Kareem shorter, more stocky at 205 pounds, gets downhill. But there he, he showed that he has some speed to be able to turn the corner. Personal foul face, face mask, mask against, against Indiana State. Against Indiana State, as you hear it in the background, the penalty. And let's see this once again here, and we'll see the penalty at the end of the play, Danon. Well, there you have it. It's right there. You have a guy, a short, stocky guy that's going to deliver the stiff arm. And the one-handed defensive back number eight for the Sycamores has to grab whatever he can just to drive him out of bounds. Only the second penalty of the afternoon for Indiana State, but you know, penalties coming at crucial times. Remember that they had that penalty roughing the passer, which put him in the red zone area. That is Southern Illinois and another one there. So a first and 10 for the Salukis from the 18 yard line. And this time it's Kareem once again getting the call and he dodges a couple of tacklers and gets down to the five yard line. He's gonna be very close to a first down, which First down marker sits just inside the four-yard line. And, Scott, you, you spoke well about the presence of those penalties. You cannot allow penalties. Obviously, penalties are part of the football game. But once you get into that red zone, or I like to call from the offensive side, the gold zone, you cannot afford to give the other team those 10 and 15-yard penalties to get them close to the goal line. Second and a long one for the Salukis. Kareem gets the call once again, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Southern Illinois. It was just as easy as that. We talked about the offensive line for Southern Illinois on the last possession, but that five-yard touchdown run was thanks in part to that line play once again, Danon. And what you have is a recipe for a great touchdown in what the Salukis did this whole drive. First, it started off with a great kickoff return by Turner, and then plays that made big chunks with the pass play, and then Kareem on the run play, and then lo and behold, you add the penalty onto that, downhill, six points later, almost seven points later, you have a score. Al Doherty in for the extra point, and it is good. Now we have some whistles after the extra point. Following the touchdown, and we'll get the official indication from our referee. It's a personal foul against Indiana State, and that's frustration. And that will be on the kickoff, that they will mark that one off on Indiana State. So opening stages here of the second quarter of our Gateway Football Conference Game of the Week. And Southern Illinois, four for four on offensive possessions, and they are now up 27 to three over Indiana State. Personal foul, leaping number 20. On the defense, point is good, penalty is enforced, 15 yards on the kickoff. TV timeout. All right, and as we head to our timeout, take a look at that touchdown once again. Kareem picking up his sixth touchdown of 2007. Southern's up by 24. Well, yet another touchdown for Southern Illinois and the Salukis, and Jerry Kill squad leads it 27-3 here with 13-10 left in the second quarter. Certainly not the kind of home coming to the sidelines that Dennis Rates wanted to see. However, he is back first time in 10 years after leading the Sycamores. 18 consecutive campaigns from 1980 to 1997. Certainly turned out a lot of great players, such as Vincey Glenn. You heard him earlier in the broadcast, but also some great coaches. Sean Payton was an assistant under rates, the head coach of the New Orleans Saints, as was Dave McGinnis, former Arizona head coach, now a Titans assistant, and several other assistants in the NFL. So rates, even though he's been out of football for a while, guys, 
his presence still being felt throughout. There's no doubt about it, Mick. You're exactly right. And the kickoff will go into the end zone for a touchback for Indiana State. As uh, we see Sean Payton here coming up from uh, New Orleans, the head coach of the Saints. Part of uh, that uh, tree, if you will, from uh, Dennis Rates over the years here at Indiana State. Folks don't realize that Indiana State, even in the 80s when Dennis was here and first took over the program, was ranked number one a couple of times back in the 80s. He really put together a program, but it is interesting. Ten years away as a head coach, Danon, and he is all of a sudden the interim head coach here at Indiana State. Well, that just tells you how much he cares about this program. He's still been affiliated with uh, the Sycamores. Oh boy. The interception by the Salukis, and they're going <laughs> to truck it on into the end zone. The ball was initially tipped and then picked up by Larry Lister, and he rumbles into the end zone for a touchdown. That's a bad break for Indiana State, but just credit that defensive line and their pressure for Southern Illinois, Danon. That is a bad break for the Sycamores, but you better be careful with Larry Luster. He's got two touchdowns on interceptions this year. He's going to think he's a running back. <laughs> Here we see it once again, Murphy back in at quarterback. And I believe it was James Cloud. Yep, James Cloud there, skying up in the air, gets the tip. Luster was right there, he falls on it, and he rumbles into the end zone for the touchdown. And as Dana mentioned, that's his second touchdown of the year for Southern Illinois. This time, it's the defense that gets the Salukis on the board, and they now lead 33 to three. And the kick is up and good. 34-3, a 31-point lead as we're going to see this once again. What a great athletic ability there, though, by James Cloud on this tip pass here, Danon. And i tell you what, what, what the Sycamores were trying to do was uh, start the wide receiver screen, and the Salukis were able to read that and make the athletic play to knock the ball up. Obviously, Larry Luster in the right place at the right time. And like I said, be careful. Big boy, you're going to see him in the locker room working on his touchdown dance, <laughs> doing something because he thinks he's a running back right now. He's carrying people into the end zone. He's probably spinning the ball. Look at him. He's acting like he's been there. He gave the referee the ball. You act like you've been there before he has. Now for the second time. And Indiana State now trailing 34 to three. And they look like after they got that field goal that things were going fairly well for the Sycamores, but things have really started to unravel here in the last couple of minutes. Let's go down to the field and check in with Mick Schaefer once again, Mick. Guys, yet, an yet another turnover, yet another touchdown for the Southern Illinois team. And when you look at Riley Murphy, that's been really his Achilles heel this season. His sixth interception in not even 100 pass attempts that's been Killer for the offense this year, and so far that's played out today as well. You're exactly right, Nick. And uh, on the other side of the ledger, Nick Hill has got quite a streak going right now heading into this game without an inter interception thrown for the Southern Illinois Salukis as Southern up 34-3. to This is Patrick from his own five yard line. Now he's got some speed. We saw him break one out in the first quarter and he finds some running room. We got some more penalty flags as things getting a little ugly here in the early stages of the second quarter as Patrick gets out to the 33 yard line. Yes, yeah, it's definitely frustration that's setting in for the Sycamores right there. That flag was blocking in the back by the Sycamores, and it's just a frustration penalty because the block was actually made on the sideline out of bounds, so the runner was on his way out of bounds. The guy that actually made the tackle was the one that was blocked in the back, but you cannot have that type of production and expect to even for stay 52. close to the Salukis. Penalty. First down. As you hear the blocking in the back penalty, it was on number 52. That's Darrell Hankins, and it looks like the freshman quarterback, Dowdell, will come back into the game and run things for the Sycamores after that interception by Riley Murphy. And I'm sorry, I don't think you can really blame Riley for that interception. That was just a great athletic play there by the defensive end, James Cloud of Southern Illinois. But they're going to go, and they told us that uh, they were going to switch off with both quarterbacks today. And now Dottle, the freshman quarterback, is in, and he'll carry it on this first down, trying to slip through tacklers. And it is way out to about the 25-yard line for a one-yard gain. Again, good pursuit by that defensive line for Southern Illinois. And one thing about Southern Illinois' defense, and you mentioned it early on, Danon, this is a team that is very deep, especially on the defensive line. They do a lot of rotation on their defensive line. Yeah, and that's, and that's definitely a great thing to have in any football's depth. 
the, the fact that you can have defensive linemen switch in and switch out and keep them fresh to be able to get upfield and contain a running game or a running quarterback is crucial to the development of a great defense. Second and nine now for Dowdell and company. And he's going to roll. Can't find anybody open, and so he is pushed out of bounds at the 27, 28 yard line for about a three yard game, but that'll force a fourth in a long situation. Matt Speed was there in on the stop for Southern Illinois. He's already blocked a punt uh, in today's game for Southern Illinois. By the way, we talked about special teams and blocking punts. Two blocked field goals last week for Southern Illinois in their victory last week. Well, they're playing complete football right now. And what the, the quest that Jerry Kill has to have as the coach of this team is how to continue to motivate them to get better, yep. to think about getting better, because they're, they're hitting on all cylinders right now. They're playing great offense, great defense, and great special teams. Where do you go from here? Some people would say down. Hopefully he can coach them and keep them going up. On third down, Dowdell trying to swing it out, and Brandon Williams comes up with a pick, the second consecutive pick for Southern Illinois in as many possessions for the Sycamores, and Southern's going to wind up with terrific field position, and Brandon saw that one from the freshman quarterback all the way, Danon. It's amazing the instincts that Brandon Williams has. He had a great big interception against Northern Illinois, took it back 52 yards, and right here he read it from the onset was able to make the pick. Obviously, he would have preferred that ball be a little bit lower so he can high step into the end zone, but the fact remains that he still made the play when it came to him. Standing back there in a cover two, the quarterback, Dodell, has to read that and know that that corner is going to be sitting in the flat. Great job by Brandon Williams. Dodell with his first interception of his career. Of course, the first career start for the freshman quarterback in today's game against the Saluki. So Southern with a first and 10 from the 28-yard line. And Nick Hill is going to run with it himself. Can't find anyone open down. And he's run out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. And he wanted a flag because he thought he was shoved out of bounds after he actually went out of bounds. But there's no penalty flags as we see it once again here, Dan. Actually pretty close. And right there, you can see him slowing down. Very questionable, right on the border. Like I said, it's just another addition to the frustration of the Sycamores. The cheerleader drops down, but he gets up. He stays strong. That's what you want to see from the program. No trainers there on the sideline with the cheerleaders. So everything seems to be okay. First and 10 <laughs> for Southern at the Indiana State 14. And they're going to get the handoff make their way out to the 11 yard line as Alex Smith was there on the carry for Southern Illinois. And what you'll see from the Southern Illinois team, because they have so much depth, they had last week six guys have rushing attempts for their program. So they're able to take these games, these high scoring games and get some quality reps On second down, play action. Hill's going to roll out, has some time. End zone, touchdown, as easy as can be. Alan Turner on the receiving end as he picks up his third touchdown of 2007. And the Salukis continue to roll here in the first half. Great job by Nick Hill. Again, 12th touchdown throw for him. Zero interceptions for the season. What better leader do you want to have on your offense than a, than a guy that can orchestrate the offense to perfection and not turn the ball over. Well, speaking of perfection, he's now over 1,000 yards passing already this season and 3,000 for his career, which is saying a lot when he's only started for one plus season as they get the extra points. And we'll see the touchdown once again for Southern Illinois on the play action. Nick Hill with all kinds of time and Turner with all kinds of room for the reception and the touchdown for Southern Illinois. Let's go back down to the sidelines and check in with Vic Schaefer. Mick? Guys, thanks very much. Nick Hill, by the way, on pace for his sixth straight game without an interception. And guys, he is second in the nation with a 184.69 quarterback rating. Now, in just a little bit, we'll show you how they figure the college quarterback ranking, uh, rating that is. We're going to make sure Danon sits down up there because there's a lot of math involved. You, you get a headache, Danon, <laughs> wow. and get sweaty. 
Hey. And we don't we don't want you passing out, okay? Hey, math was my subject. I had already talked about the fact they that They don't teach I math in Iowa? What are you Come talking on, everybody about? Everybody knows that. Hey, we got to we got to count the corn. What are you talking about? <laughs> All right, here is the pass uh, efficiency formula for college football. You take 8.4 times the yards and then add that total to 330 times the touchdowns and then subtract the number 200 multiplied by interceptions and then add 100 times completions and then you divide it all by the number of attempts and you get a quarterback rating and if you're Nick Hill a pretty high one 184.69 like we said heading into the game and that's only getting higher as that touchdown pass no doubt rose his total I am completely confused at this stage of the game I think Nick but that's Nick, nothing new I or think unusual. Nick just made that up I, I, I personally <laughs> think so that's his own calculation <laughs> Mick's doing his own calculation. <laughs> yeah. The heat's already getting to him, and we haven't even finished the first half. <laughs> All right, Southern getting set to kick off once again. Kyle Doherty has been a very busy individual in this first half for the Salukis. And receiving this is Chris Diker. And Diker will make his way out to the 32-yard line. As Indiana State is doing a good job, Dane, and on their kickoff return unit, they have uh, gotten some pretty good field position here this afternoon. Yeah, they're averaging over 25 yards per kickoff return. They're getting their, the ball out past their 20, and that's all you can ask for from a kickoff return unit. Yeah, you would like to get some big plays downfield near midfield, but if you can keep them from their backs to the end zone, you're doing a solid job. They just have to keep the ball in their hands, take up some clock, and put some touchdowns on the board. Dowdell, the freshman quarterback, back in once again on this possession, and he is going to carry it on first down. Slips by a couple of tacklers. You can see the athletic ability of this freshman quarterback, and he gets 11 on that carry and a first down as Marty Rogers finally puts him to the turf. Great job, and watching this guy in pregame warm-up, you can tell that he's an athlete. Obviously, the coaches have confidence that he can make plays with his leg and his arm, but what he has to do is obviously get this whole offense moving forward. It's great that he's able to make that play and maybe spark something and get things going, but he's got to get the ball downfield and get some touchdowns on the board. That's McCulley to his right in the backfield, the running back for Indiana State on this first and 10. And it's going to be a delayed draw for Dowdell once again. Look at him slip by more tacklers, get into Southern territory. He's finally wrapped up at the 44-yard line. That's a gain of 12 yards, and Charles Dowdell showing some great athletic ability on this possession. And this is what this is a design play. Obviously, it's a quarterback draw. Great job. You can drive a truck through that hole right there. But it all starts with McCulley taking a route on a swing route. We've seen that swing route run several times today. Obviously, the, the Salukis got an interception off a swing route earlier, but they're able to take advantage of the coaching and the adjustments made to make the play straight downfield. Now they're going to run the option. This is Alex Thomas. He's got some running room inside the 20. Can he go the distance? Five touchdowns, Sycamore! Alex Thomas, 44-yard touchdown run for Indiana State. We talked about looking for that spark. There it is, Danon, for the Sycamores. That's what you want to see for the Sycamores, something to build on right there. Great job by Alex Smith, eluding tacklers and using his speed to get downfield. Obviously a great job by Dodell to get the ball in his hands quickly. Downfield blocking is crucial. Wide receiver did an excellent job containing that corner. Extra point is up, and it is good. Let's take a look at this touchdown once again, the second of the season for Alex Thomas, the senior wide receiver. And he shows some great speed here, great pitch by the freshman quarterback. And look at the running room he has there, Dana. Look. Great job. The key to that play, obviously downfield, was the block of number 89, Jeremy Gray. To be able to contain that corner, and you don't have to knock him down. You don't have to pancake a guy to make a good block. 
just shadow him and get in his way and let your running back make the play, and that's what he did right there. Great job by Allen. It's not just any other cornerback. That's Craig Turner, one of the elite cornerbacks in the Gateway Football Conference. As we see it once again, look at Jeremy Gray's work. Great job. Yes. And, and, and there's a perfect, and, and you know this, Danon, as being as a wide receiver, sometimes you just don't need that crushing block. Sometimes you could just be there and be kind of like a screen as, a, as they would do in, in, in basketball. Exactly. You just play basketball, and when you teach guys to block downfield, teach wide receivers to block, you almost use basketball shadowing drills. It's all about footwork. You know the guy's not going to pancake anybody. They're not standing out there like big offensive linemen. They just need to shadow, get in the way, and maybe a shove here or there will get them a big play. And right there, they were able to, to capitalize on that big play. So Jerry Kills Club giving up a touchdown here in the second half. It's now a 31-point lead for Nick Hill and company. And Nick Hill and the Southern Illinois offense will be heading back out of the field. This kickoff from Corey Barnador. Left footer gets a high kick. It's short. Turner will take it at his own 13-yard line. Look at him bust through the wedge on the top of your screen, and he'll get great, give great field position for that Saluki offense at the Southern 41-yard line. Matt Alaria is one of the backup quarterbacks for Southern Illinois. He's a young man from the Metro East in the St. Louis Metropolitan area and actually got some work in last week in the victory for Southern Illinois, and he's more of a running quarterback, and I would imagine somewhere along the line we'll probably see Joe Alaria today for Southern Illinois. Yeah, at this stage of the season, it, it would be crucial uh, if you were able to stumble upon an injury to one of your star guys like Nick Hill. So you want them to have some good quality reps. They got strong opponents coming uh, down, down the block in regards to the rest of the season. So you want them to continue to stay sharp, but at the same time, you want to be smart. And the pass screen to Alan Turner, the senior. And Good pursuit there by the Indiana State defense. Only a gain of one yard on that screen play to the senior wide wideout. Nick Hill on the day, five of six for 97 yards already this afternoon for Southern Illinois. That was before the pass, and now he's six of seven for 98. And there you see the one at the very end there, Dana. No interceptions once again. And you definitely want to keep the goose egg on that stat right there. He does a great job of controlling the ball. 112 attempts without an interception heading into this afternoon's action. He hands the ball off to John Randall. Look at him bounce off a couple of tacklers, get a second effort, even though his team's up by 31, all the way to Indiana State's 46-yard line. That, my friend, is very impressive. It is very impressive. And you look, the, look at the balance of this Saluki offense and what they're able to do with the run, with the downfield passes, with the screens. Everything's hitting on all cylinders. It's just, it's just a joy to watch a team that's coached like Jerry Kill is coaching them, offense, defense, and special teams. This offense has controlled the game from the outset. 12 yards on that carry, first and 10 for Southern. Back into Indiana State territory. Larry Warner now in the game, giving Randall a breather, and he run out of bounds at the 42-yard line of Indiana State as Ryan Patrick was there to run him out of bounds for the Sycamores. Look at this one, two, and three punch in the running back position for the Salukis. You have a great, obviously balanced, all-around running back in Randall, and then you get down to Kareem, who's a downhill, shorter, stockier runner, and then you bring in your other uh, running back, Warner, who's this kind of a scat back that can hit the corner and go. So, I mean, they have a three-headed monster right there that is for hard for any defense to, to defend. Warner, the junior running back, gets the call once again, and he has stopped at the 35-yard line. Very close to a first down as Darius Middlebrooks was in on the stop for Indiana State, and they are going to give him the first down, Dana. Everything starts up front with the offensive line. This offensive line, we talk about the weapons, and we talk about Nick Hill and what the wide receivers can do and the running backs and those three guys, but that offensive line is tremendous. They're doing a great job of hand handling themselves up front and just taking the heart away from the Sycamores right now. First and 10 again for Southern at the Indiana State 35. Play action, Hill, a lot of time, and he finds Justin Turner this time. Very close, and I think he's gonna get another first down on a 10-yard pickup as 
Dominique Howard was there on the stop as we see it once again, Dana. Yeah, watch Marquez, Lockwood, Pharrell, Smith, and Combrink. They do a great job right up front. I mean, those guys, it's just a stalemate right there. Nobody's moving upfield at all. Hill can sit back there for another five seconds if he wanted to and wait for a receiver to get open down downfield in the, in the end zone. It's just great to watch. Darren Marquez, as you mentioned, that left tackle and right guard, Sean Smith, number 75. Those two gentlemen are two preseason all-conference players on that offensive line for the Salukis, who are first and 10 again. Warner again, and he will be wrapped up at the 20-yard line for a gain of five yards. It's nothing pretty here, Dana. It's just your basic football, but like you said, it's impressive just to watch this football team work offensively, defensively, and special teams, and we're seeing this offense just roll the highest scoring offense in Division I cha uh, football championship subdivision. It's just the confidence that they, they have out there and what they show. They're able to come out one wide receiver, three running backs in the backfield, whatever set that they come out in, they're successful. Warner gets the carry again on second and five. He's going to get a first down as he'll make about a seven-yard gain on that particular play as Chris Mobley was one of those for Indiana State that ran him out of bounds. But again, not before a seven-yard gain and another first down for Southern Illinois. Southern, and we'll watch this once again. Warner carrying the ball predominantly here on this possession for watch the Salukis. Plant, watch him plant that foot right there. Right there, he should be tackled right in the hole, but he's able to plant that foot, go east to the sideline and be able to turn his shoulders upfield. That's what you see in scat backs, a guy that can actually read the play. He's not trusting totally on his speed, but on his vision as well. And he'll get it once again. Look at this hole, and he'll get inside the five, down to the four-yard line for an eight-yard gain. Coming into the game for Southern Illinois, this was a team that was only third in the conference in rushing, averaging 229 yards a game, second in the conference in passing at 247, and number one in the conference in total yards as we see Warner's run once again. Big fullback out in front of him, making plays downfield as well. We talk about the offensive line and obviously the three running backs behind him, but we have to give credit to the big fullback, Rick Burgess, who's doing an excellent yep. job opening up those holes. Who already has a touchdown today, including Kareem, who gets the handoff, and he gets his second touchdown of the game, and Southern extends their lead to 47-10 to on that four-yard run by Kareem. How about that? Kareem gets to get in at the end zone. I think of, uh, I'm not a Raider fan, obviously, being a Chiefs guy, but you think of the Raiders and Zach Crockett mm -hmm. when the running backs get all the way down to the end. They worked all the way to get there. You pull them out and you put in your, your goal line short yardage guy. But he did a great job, and nevertheless, you get seven points on the board. Doherty in for the extra point once again, and he connects. Let's watch the fullback at work once again here, Danon, on this touchdown run. Great job identifying his blocker, obviously opening up clearly right there. If you can do a job like that as a fullback, that's not even fair. That's not right to push him back. His helmet's coming off. Looks like I mean, Lorenzo Neal. That's, that's amazing. Great job. Lorenzo Neal, obviously a great fullback with the San Diego Chargers, but he's doing a great job in there, Burgess. As Kareem picks up his seventh touchdown of the season, sixth on the ground, second of the afternoon as we see it once again. 48-10 to 10 is the score here at Municipal Stadium here in Terre Haute, Indiana. Southern already equaling their points per game performance here in just the first half of play. Just over six minutes left in this first half. Next week, our Gateway Football Conference Game of the Week will be down in Springfield, Missouri. You'll be there, Dana. Missouri yes. State will be in action. What a surprising start they're off to right now. Yeah, there's some strong play being going on in the Gateway Conference this year. I'm looking forward to that game to see how Illinois State can match up against that Missouri State team. There's, there's going to be a good competition. Denver Johnson's team coming away with a loss last week in Columbia, Missouri against the Missouri Tigers. His team ranked uh, in the top 25, and as we talked about in the outset, I know Mick Schaefer mentioned this as well, that five teams in the top 25 in the Gateway Football Conference, it has already started out to be a terrific season. 
And you can even throw in the two Dakotas that will be a part of the conference next year as well. One's ranked and one's receiving votes, votes excuse me, just like Missouri State. On the kickoff, this return to the 25-yard line is taken by Mike Woods. So we'll see who's in at quarterback once again. It looks like the freshman, Dowdell, will be back in for Indiana State. This is basically now, when you're down by this much, 48 to 10 here in the first half, it's, it's basically a learning experience I think Coach Rates is going to do with his young freshman quarterback. And that's what you, you have to live through these types of down times in order to develop players. And, and unfortunately, you have this situation where you're giving up 48 points in the first half, but it's something that you can still build upon and something that these players can learn from. Hopefully that'll make them better players and a better team in the future. McCulley in the backfield with the freshman quarterback. Charles, who sparked in that last possession where they scored the touchdown, and he finds Brian Jackson wide open underneath, and he'll get a first down, and Southern wanted the fumble, but they're gonna say that Jackson was down point of contact at the 43-yard line. It is an 18-yard pickup on that pass play. Great job here by the receiver just getting into an open space. The Salukis are doing a, a good job or a consistent job of trying to jump up on those swing routes. Wide receivers able still to find an opening and make a play downfield to get the first down. As a wide receiver, is that a case where you kind of overload a zone in that particular position? Is that why it was so wide open? Yes, and when you're going against zone and you have that corner, somebody has responsibility for the flat. They're, they may take some chances on those swing routes, and then you have to find a gap or an area that the quarterback can still get you the ball. Dowdell trying to escape from a lot of traffic as he felt the pressure on the blitz, and he's tackled right at the line of scrimmage. There is a penalty flag, and we're going to have a holding call against Indiana State. Penalties has hurt this Sycamore team this first half. On the offense, number 50. Personal fouls. Ten-yard penalty, previous spot. Repeat first down. We'll see this play once again. Watch the left guard on this particular play for Indiana State. And uh, you're on offense, not defense there, my man. Little little tackle right there. Well, Ernie. he looked like he got caught between whether to cut block or to stalk block the guy. And unfortunately, or fortunately for the Salukis, he was able to knock down that guard. And hey, there's a lot of dirty things that go on in those trenches with those offensive <laughs> linemen, so I'm not surprised. But you weren't a part of any of that because you played on the outside, on the on the perimeter, right? You, hey. you wouldn't have done anything dirty back in the day, right? Hey, I, I take the Fifth Amendment on part of that, <laughs> Scott. Part but, of it, okay. But I tell you what, the wide receivers, we like some action too, but we got to dip in and dip out, you know. I got gotcha. you. got to be sneaky. Yeah, you gotta be, when you're standing 100, 150 pounds less than everybody else, you just kind of step in and jab and then you run. <laughs> There you see head coach Dennis Rates. He is the interim head coach here at Indiana State now with the firing of Lou West earlier this week here in Terre Haute. Another penalty for the Sycamores. That's the sixth of this first half. And now after the pass play to Jackson for 15 yards, the Indiana State Sycamores have gone 15, yard back, 15 yards back on successive penalties. And on the play action, the freshman quarterback, Dowdell, overthrows his intended receiver by a lot. That's Jeremy Robinson. And that'll force a second and a very long as we see these penalties right now. Look at that, six for 63. Look at Southern, a clean game right now, Dana. Yeah, they're playing, like we said, we said it over and over throughout the game. They're playing, hitting on all cylinders right now. Indiana State is moving backwards. And what you cannot have is a struggling team, especially a struggling offense, that's moving backwards instead of forwards. You cannot get predictable. Dodell cannot be a predictable quarterback. He has to be able to, to at least show that they can run the ball and make plays. And unfortunately, because they're getting these penalties, they can't do yeah, that. Exactly. Alex Thomas, who sparkled on a... 43-yard run and that time didn't sparkle. That one was sniffed out by the Saluki defense after a gain of one to the 29-yard line. Take a look at the Saluki defense at work once again on this reverse by the wide receiver, Alex Thomas. Speed to the ball and rally into the ball. Look how many white hats you see around that ball each and every time someone has to make a tackle. There's about six or seven guys at least that's around the ball, either trying to strip the ball or just jumping in on the tackle. 
third and forever for Indiana State. Here comes the blitz once again. And this one should have been intercepted by Marty Rogers. He would have had his first pick of 2007. And you know, Dana, you know he wants that one back in a bad way. Yes, he does. You cannot allow cannot allow the ball to cross your body and for you young defensive backs out there for anybody watching these coaches oh. look how that ball he allows it to cross his face and try to catch it behind him stick those 10 fingers out in front of you and catch the ball like you're a wide receiver I always used to make fun of DBs when I played because I said they were receivers that couldn't catch oh so you're talking a little smack huh? oh, oh, a little bit uh -huh. I've been known to talk a little bit of smack <laughs> okay <so. laughs> well this guy can talk smack but the way he returns for the Salukis, but he can't talk too much that time as he is popped. And we got some extracurricular activities after the play. In on the stop was Darius Middlebrooks, but behind the play, there was some pushing and shoving going on, Dana. And again, as you talked about a little bit earlier with some of the penalties for Indiana State, frustration is really starting to spill over for the Sycamores. Well, what you have is a frustrated team on the Sycamore side, and then you have some young guys. over, personal foul, number 45 on the kicking team. 15-yard penalty, first up. Daniel Mill Millington, excuse me, uh, gets uh, flagged for the foul for Indiana State. This is definitely a one-sided game on the offensive side and, and, this, and the penalty side is that uh, you have a disciplined team or a team that's playing disciplined right now with the Salukis and a team that's playing frustrated in the Sycamores. Have you or do you know any of your uh, friends that played in the league, whether it's college football or, or the National Football League, uh, ever dealt with a situation where the coach was fired in the middle of the season and just kind of that mental uh, framework that I'm, I would imagine is kind of a grind for a lot of these players right now? I think it is a grind, and unfortunately I was never a part of that, and I, I don't have any friends that actually were because it's such a unique situation, especially in football, maybe in basketball, baseball. Yeah, it's quite common because there's so many games, 82 right. games and 162 games in baseball. But football, especially in the NFL, 16 games, you really have a very rare times where you can change co coaches and expect something from the season. It's so much parity. Uh, in the NFL, teams make it in the play playoffs with 8-8 eight and eight records and so on, and you're looking towards the draft towards the end of the season. So it's very rare that you would ever think or see a, a coach be replaced in the middle of a season. That nine-yard rush was Joe Alaria, the freshman that we just talked about, who does that from time to time, and they did it last week for Southern Illinois. Comes in on a running situation, now second and one. Nick Hill back in at quarterback. Oh, what a great defensive play and almost a great snag for Southern Illinois, but what a great defensive play there. I believe that was DeAndre Lott as Jabril Lewis almost came up with the reception after the tip passes. We see it once again, Dana. Yes, a great play by the defensive back to be able to recover and make that play with his off right hand. And as a tip drill as a defensive back, hopefully you're around or you tip that ball around where one of your guys is. But we've seen Nick Hill go for 12 touchdowns and zero interceptions and over 100 attempts. He's getting kind of close to possibly one of those balls ending up in the blue shirt. And Kareem will get the call on a third and one. Check that, that's Richard White actually getting the call on the third and one and he'll get three yards for the first down, the freshman running back for Southern Illinois. He saw some action last week in the victory for Southern Illinois. And what you see in this conventional offense that the Salukis are running, and it's normal throughout mostly all football. First down, if you pass and you complete it, you can look for a short down run. If you don't pass and you run the ball and you get a large chunk of yards, you can look for a pass the second down. Okay, we'll swing it out to Allen Turner, or excuse me, Justin Turner, and he'll get to the 35-yard line. Very close to another Southern Illinois first down. This team is very balanced to be able to come out and throw when they want, run when they want. They don't have to become one-dimensional with the run game or, or even when they get behind. When they got behind against Northern Illinois earlier this year, they still were moving the ball with running game and pass game, and they were able to come back because of some great defensive play. So, I mean, when, it's very unique that you can see a team that's great on all three phases of the game, but right now the Salukis team is. Second and one, he'll back to pass, and he'll dump it underneath to the freshman running back, White, and he's 
tackle from behind, and I think, he, I think Danny is going to be just shy of that first down marker at the 35-yard line. That is a great play by the Sycamore defense to that wide open of a screen to make that play at the line of scrimmage, not only at the line of scrimmage, but still keep them from getting the first down. That's a great job by the Sycamores. Third and less than a yard for Southern. At the Indiana State 35 yard line. And White will get the call once again. He does get the first down and more as he gets inside the 30 down to the 29 yard line for a six yard gain and we see that offensive line at work once again Danon for Southern Illinois. It's amazing to watch, it's a treat to watch this offensive line handle this game like they are. Pass, run, screens, dive plays, up and down the field. They are manhandling the Sycamore front four. Southern Illinois is gonna call their second time out of the half with the first and 10 from the Indiana State 29 yard line. We have under two minutes left in this first half of play. Southern Illinois leading Dennis Rates' Indiana State Sycamores by a score of 48 to 10. Again, Dennis taking over for Coach Lou West who was fired on Monday here in Terre Haute, Indiana. Coach Rates who had a lot of success here in Terre Haute as the head coach, spent 18 seasons and collected 94 victories. And he last coached in 1997. We will hear from Indiana State Athletics Director Ron Prettyman and talk about that decision to let Lou West go during the middle of the season. Dennis Rates actually, actually after he was the head coach here, stayed with the athletic department and was working as an assistant athletic director and actually retired in June. Now he's back to work again. <laughs> hey, what are they saying to the Godfather? Every time I try to get out, they, they pull me right <laughs> pull back, me back in. in. That's exactly right. First and 10 for Southern Illinois from the Sycamore 29 yard line. Play action on the offset eye. Hill a lot of time once again and wide open is Alan Turner and he's into the end zone. Touchdown for Alan Turner, his second of the afternoon, and now Southern Illinois is up 54 to 10. 29 right. yards on the pass reception and touchdown. We used to call this route a razor route by the wide receiver. Basically, it's a post corner, and because Nick Hill has so much time in the backfield, it actually almost becomes a post corner hook because the wide receiver doesn't want to run out of bounds. It's a great job, great throw, great catch and way to sniff out the end zone. Well, one of the other busy Salukis here in this first half has been their kicker, Kyle Doherty. And he is perfect on the afternoon. 55 to 10. As we see this touchdown once again, and this thing it just looks almost too easy right now for Southern Illinois. It is very easy, easy pickings, and it starts up front. Obviously, whatever quarterback you put in there, when they have this much time to pick downfield, not only does he have so much time, he's able to eye his receiver the whole route and still be able to throw and catch. Great job by Alan Turner right there, being able to sniff out the end zone and make the play. Catch the ball with your hands, use your arm as a weapon, and get into the end zone. What more could you ask from a pass game? There's not much as Alan Turner picks up his fourth TD reception of 2007. And look at Southern Illinois. No punts today as they have scored on every possession this afternoon. We talked about efficiency, and of course, Mick brought up the efficiency of the passing efficiency, but you don't have any turnovers, no penalties, and you score on every possession. That's about as efficient as you can get exactly. in any football game as Jerry Kill and company uh, Manhandling Dennis Rates' Indiana State Sycamores here this afternoon in our Gateway Football Conference Game of the Week. And the question that I have is that you have some coaches out there uh, like Charlie Weiss that talked about uh, when they lost that they weren't going to watch the video. They weren't right. going to watch the game. When you play this perfect of a football game, is it even worth watching as well? Is there a good side to not watching a game? Is there a bad side? I mean, there's not much you can – all you can say is, okay, guys, look at this film. Go do it again next week. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. I believe Youngstown State is on the horizon for Southern Illinois. It's not going to get too easy for them there. This is Woods on the kickoff return, and he's wrapped up at the 31-yard line as Corey Lindsay was there on the stop for Southern Illinois. 
Saluki's ranked sixth in one poll, seventh in another heading into this weekend's contest in the football championship subdivision. It's not one double A anymore. It's now one A football championship subdivision. You got that? It's a mouthful. There's yes, no doubt about that. I'm almost scared to say it. <laughs> Riley Murphy back in at quarterback for Indiana State. And this is McCulley getting the call. And he gets out to the 38-yard line. But I think the key, and I know the commissioner of the Gateway Football Conference, Patty Viverito, has told me that the key to that whole football championship subdivision is championship because they talk about how there is a true champion instead of the bull quote unquote championship series in division one. And that's a very important and obviously it's a big argument about how you run the bowl series in uh, division one A. Ooh, I mean Brian Jackson was just hit after a bad pitch by Riley Murphy. Loose ball and who's got it? Saluki say they have it. And somehow, some way Brian Jackson is among the scrum trying to get the loose ball. No official indication as of yet. And they're going to say Indiana State keeps the ball. But I'll tell you what, I mean, Brian Jackson just gets popped. Hey, people, you got to wear mouthpiece in football. Hello. But through the mouthpiece, you are saying if you're number one right there, ball, bounce back up to me, please, quickly. Bounce back to me. Bounce back to me before this guy hits me. And he couldn't get control of the ball, but he was still able to recover the fumble. But that's a dangerous situation, not only with the ball, but without the ball. Could be injuries. Marty Rogers, I think, might have made up for that missed interception as he was the one that delivered the blow to Brian Jackson, who's in the slot on the top of your screen on this third down for Southern Illinois. Oh, my God. I mean, Southern is teeing off as Riley Murphy can't get the first down. And let's take a look at this hit on the play before. Watch this. Oh, my goodness. Hello. Good morning. Time will wind down here in the first half. It has been all Southern Illinois as the Salukis opening up the 2007 conference season as they lead Indiana State by a score of 55 to 10. The Salukis averaging 49 points a game heading into this afternoon's contest. And I've already put 55 on the board in the first half against the Indiana State Sycamores. And why don't we head down to the field right now as Mick Schaefer is with the Saluki head coach, Jerry Kill. Mick? Guys, thanks very much. Coach, five rushing touchdowns, two passing, a pick six, and a block punt. Have you guys played a better overall half this season? Well, the, you know, the kids are locked in pretty good. I think we're getting better and better each week. And, uh, you know, we, we, had a, we, we allowed them a big play, and that's something we talk about that we need to get strengthened out. But uh, overall, I think we're playing with good, solid intensity right now. I know you're always competing, but you know, kind of a tough, unique situation over the, on the other sideline. Lou West out. You have Dennis Rates in. Some empathy for for, for Coach Rates. Yeah, I, I've got I've got empathy for both people. I mean, in this profession, it's very difficult. And when you get fired in the middle of the year, that I mean, I, I feel for his family lose, and then then taking over a job in this situation. There's a lot of feelings, you know. I uh, when I took the program over Southern Illinois, we went through struggles and uh, been there and, and done that. All right, Coach. Thanks very much. We'll thank see you in the second half. All right, Mick. Thank you very much. Thank you, Coach Kill and Coach Kill's team is on a roll and we will see a touchdown here watch the fullback rick burgess do his job supplanting the tackler touchdown many of them for southern illinois they're up by 45 and a half we're back here on the gateway conference football game of the week joined by indiana state head coach interim head coach uh, dennis rates and coach i know the results aren't there and it's been a whirlwind type of week how have the players though responded to this week no, obviously not not uh, as you would like, you know, I mean, uh, about everything that we could do wrong we did. We get a punt block, we get two passes intercepted for touchdowns. Uh, we don't stop anything for the second week in a row. We're out here, we haven't forced a punt for uh, a game and a half, and, and obviously uh, we're not a very good football team, and what we've got to worry about is, uh, is our players and not worry about what somebody else is doing. So the biggest, our focus has got to be, are we going to fight or roll over some more? But but. It just can't be this way. Coach, thanks for your time. Luck in the second half. Guys. All right, Mick, thank you very much. But when you look at the numbers, 
it, it doesn't tell the story of what we've seen this afternoon. Some of the numbers actually are pretty even. Steven, in fact, Indiana State, Dane, in leading the time of possession game, turnovers we talked about as well as penalties, but even offensive plays and yardage are pretty even. Well, I think what you have is the Salukis that are scoring quickly. They're very efficient. There haven't been any penalties. And then on the other side, the Sycamores are taking up some clock. They have established a couple of drives that went downfield. They got the field goal through one, and then they had the turnover late in the, le in the other drive. But they have been sucking up a lot of clock. Unfortunately, they haven't been putting points on the board and, like Coach Raitt said, stopping their offense. As we get set to start things off here in the second half, you mentioned or you saw Corey Lindsay returning this kickoff in for Craig Turner, and he will collect it at the Southern Illinois 13-yard line, getting some blocks, making some nice moves as he does a great job getting out to the 48-yard line. That was a terrific job by Corey there, reading those blocks and making the shift to give the Salukis great field position to open up the second half. Yeah, great job on the return. Great job on the blocking up front. Normally, as a kick returner, you don't have time to read blocks. You can read one or two blocks and hit a crease. But that's just a testament to how good of a blocking unit that is because they were able not only to make their blocks but stick on their blocks and allow him just to kind of be like a running back back there. As Dana mentioned at the half, Salukis were perfect on conversions and on possessions scoring that is in the first half we'll see if it continues in the second half with their new quarterback Joe Alaria the freshman John Randall he's not a freshman he is a senior and he gets a big hole and more running room all the way to the 36 for a 15 yard gain this offensive line is picking up right where they left off in regards to dominating up front and you do not want to have as coach Wade said they're not playing like they want to win or not playing to the level of their capabilities. And you don't want to come out on your first two times you're on the ball is get a 50-yard kickoff return and then a large chunk of running yardage from your, uh, the other running back. You see John Randall's stats, and he gets the call once again, and he'll push his way to the 29-yard line for a gain of seven. And you can tell just on that play alone as well, if you haven't been able to tell in the first half, uh, Southern's offensive line just completely dominating uh, the line of scrimmage. Yes, they are, and that's where the game has started up front. That's why you have a guy like Nick Hill who hasn't thrown an interception since last year, and, and why you have great running backs with Randall, Randall and Kareem and Warner who can gain chunks of yardage at any time because all those guys up front, the unsung heroes, are making the plays. Again, Joe Alaria, the freshman, in at quarterback here to start things in the second half for the Salukis. And Kareem will get the call this time, and he will bulldoze his way to the 25-yard line for a four-yard gain. That's good enough for the first down. And there we see two of the three-headed monster already in progress here in the opening possession of the second half. Running backs we're talking about for Southern Illinois, Dana. I tell you what, and that's what a, a, another testament to this offense is, is that you have Coach Kill who may not want to come out and throw the ball too much in the second half. You're up by 45 points in the beginning of the third quarter. So you decide to run. The Sycamores know you're going to run, and yet you're still able to get chunks of yardage and first downs with the run game when everyone knows that it's coming. And on first down from the Indiana State 25-yard line, Kareem will get the call again, and he'll get about a three-yard gain on that particular carry. Darius Middlebrooks among them on the stop for Indiana State. And here's where the evaluation of each team comes in this type of game. And as you get into the fourth quarter, more importantly, as you see on the offensive side, on the Saluki side, you want to see if they have that drive that last nail into the coffin mm -hmm. kind of attitude. And on the other side with the Sycamores, you want to see if anybody quits. You want to see if a guy is going to go out there and fight, no matter if it's 100 to 10, if they're still going to go out there and fight. Valeria, play action, rolling out, going underneath, and it goes, 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 goes out of his hand, uh, the hands of the intended receiver. That's Byron Geddes, the sophomore tied in for Southern Illinois. And Joe Laria was two of three last week in passing as he got some action. Also, four, 54 yards rushing. He picked up his first points in last week's win for Southern Illinois. It's a great job of poise by the young quarterback to be able to make that throw. It's a catchable pass that should have been a completion. But now they're sitting at third and long right now. Let's see what he can do. We'll talk about Byron Geddes here in a couple of seconds, says Alario from the shotgun on this third down. 
Rolling out once again, and he overthrows his intended receiver downfield. That was Todd Hensley, and the incompletion makes it a fourth down for Southern Illinois. Byron Geddes was a young man who actually played professionally baseball for the Kansas City Royals organization and is now at Southern Illinois playing some football for this very good Saluki football team who is now going to attempt a 40-yard field goal. Kyle Doherty, who has been perfect on the afternoon as far as extra points are concerned. Good snap, good hold, and the kick is good. So the opening possession for the Salukis, they roll down and they get the 40-yard field goal for Doherty, and it's now 58 to 10, Southern over Indiana State. Let's head back down on the sidelines and check in with our own Mick Schaefer. Mick? Guys, just your average, regular, everyday sophomore, 27-year-old backup tight end, right? Yeah, Byron Geddes, you saw him the drop the pass there. He did have a catch last week, one catch for 17 yards. This, of course, is his second sport. His first was baseball, and he was more than just an organizational guy for the Kansas City Royals guys. He actually played for the big league club back in 2004, 21 games, in fact. He was seven. Seven of 39 guys with a double, a triple, no homers, and one RBI. The 2003 Royals Minor League Player of the Year and the Double A Player of the Year in all the entire country, all the organizations. So, quite a prospect. Like the time was Byron Geddes. He decided, you know, I'm going to give up this baseball thing and try football out, and it hasn't hasn't been uh, too bad so far. All right, Mick. Thanks, and uh, no, it hasn't especially when you're playing for Southern Illinois. Yes. It's working out quite well for him. Exactly, and that just shows what kind of athletes no Jerry Kill has on that side of the field. He has guys that can do it all in the running back position, and now you have a tight end right there that can go out there and, and you know hit a few bombs if he wants to. Jordy getting set to kick off here. And this will be Woods collecting it at his own eight yard line for Indiana State. Nice sidestep there and he'll get out to the 26 yard line as Indiana State has shown a nice return game here this afternoon. Down by 48 here in the opening stages of the third quarter. By the way, Doherty's 40 yard field goal is his longest. He's four or five so far in 2007. And Dana, hey, this is Mick down on the sidelines. You're a uh, former baseball, former uh, football guy as well. You did both. Uh, how unprecedented is that? We see that all the time with guys playing the minor leagues and then going back and playing college football, but rarely do you see it, a former major league player doing that. Exactly. That's very rare. You made a great point, Mick, in that I, I don't even remember a guy. I know many guys that have played in the minor league system. They might have been drafted out of high school and, and kind of double-dipped. Uh, college football, et cetera. I, when I played at Iowa, I played baseball in the offseason, and then right after my junior year was drafted and played the summer, went back and played football for my senior year, then went back and played baseball after the football season. But you're right, it is unprecedented that you have a guy that actually makes it up to the major league level, then decides to come back down and play college football. Scott Danen was testing those NCAA rules every single year there. <laughs> Oh, well, we also found out he talked a lot of smack back in the day. <laughs> we're, we're learning a lot more about Dana here today on this second down. Pass complete for Indiana State as they're on the receiving end was Jeremy Robinson. Yes, I have a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde uh -huh. type of thing going. Mick knows a little bit about We've that. We've seen the Dr. Jekyll. I guess Mick will have to tell us more about Mr. Hyde. <laughs> well, well, guys, if you, Scott, if you've ever seen him on the basketball court, he is a showman. That might be his best sport. He should have tried that out. <laughs> For the Globetrotters or something or what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For the Washington Generals. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've been on the general side. <laughs> Third and six for Indiana. Dowdell back in a quarterback. Escapes Cloud's pressure, but an interception again for Southern Illinois. That's Anthony Williams. He's got some running room. Can he go the distance? 15, 10, and he can't as he's finally wrapped up at the four-yard line as Ernie Lee stopped Williams from getting an interception off the pick from Dowdell, and that is the fourth turnover of the afternoon for Indiana State. 
And unfortunately for Dowdell, he does have a receiver open. He's open a little bit earlier than he can get him the ball because he's running for his life in the yeah. backfield. And that's where you have the problem. It starts all up front. If you cannot block guys up front, it doesn't matter if the receivers are 20 yards downfield wide open. By the time they, the defense is reading that receiver as well. Sometimes you have great defensive corners that are baiting the quarterback into believing a receiver is open. But right there, that wide out was open. and Unfortunately, they could not connect. Warner wants the call on first down. And he'll be just shy of the goal line for another touchdown for Southern Warner, Illinois. Warner, and Warner, I believe, is the only one, in, at least in the backfield, other than the quarterbacks, that hasn't scored yet today for Southern Illinois. So I guess Coach Kill says, hey, <laughs> we need Larry to get a little get a little love and get some six points here this afternoon. Well, right now they're leaving him in there. Before, he, he was the one that got them right. down to the end zone, yep. and then he was taken out. So and Kareem Coach got Kill, that touchdown, exactly. yeah. Exactly. So Coach Kill is recognizing he got to give a little bit of love to Warner, too. Uh, let's see if Warner gets this love as he tries to make the push at the goal line. Nope. Good stack up there by the Indiana Warner, State defense. Says Warner's going to be about a mm, half yard shy of that goal line, and now it'll be a third and goal from the half yard line for Southern Illinois. And he's not your prototypical running back or goal line guy. I, I'd say out of the three guys, you have Kareem, who's probably like what I would call a rolling ball of butcher knives, a right. short, stocky guy that can get low and get into the end zone, has a lot of weight behind him. He's more of a scat back in Warner. There he will get the call once again, and Mobley comes knifing in, and he will drag him right at the line of scrimmage. Chris Mobley who is one of the better linebackers on this Indiana State football team. Stops Warner short, Warren of the touchdown. And it looks like they're going to go for it here as we see it again, Dana. Yeah, and we haven't talked much about the Sycamore defense, but you do have guys like Moby that are rallying to the ball, that don't show any quit, that's out there playing with his heart and soul, and he's able to make the play on the goal line. Now we see Lockwood there. Looks like he's going to lead the way on this fourth and goal from the half yard line. And Warner dives in. Yes, touchdown Southern Illinois. Larry gets in on the fun for the Salukis as he scores from a half yard out. 64 to 10 Salukis. Right here, he gets a great job, and, and I like that three-headed deal back in the backfield with the Salukis where they're able to get lead runners mm. a lot of space. He trips over the fullback, but he has the balance and the coordination to dive into the end zone. Great job by Warner. There's also a good reason why they have number 61, Aaron Lockwood, also leading the way. That was a terrific block there by Aaron. Extra point is up and good as we see the touchdown once again. The Salukis rolling here in the Gateway Football Conference opener in Terre Haute. Welcome back to Terre Haute, Indiana, Southern Illinois. As you can see up big, speaking of big, there's a big man, Aaron Lockwood. Yes. If, if I had yeah. hair like that, if I had that much hair, maybe I'd try that, Dana, but that's just not going to work for me. But uh, Aaron Lockwood, who was uh, <laughs> doing yeoman's work as the up back on a couple of the goal line situations for Southern Illinois, he's about the only one in the backfield that hasn't scored for Southern Illinois this afternoon. Yeah, and you talk about that haircut, and you said it wouldn't work for you. I don't no. know if it works for him much either, <laughs> but, but the thing is, say that because I'm 100 yards away from him up here in the, in the booth. <laughs> that's a great point. <laughs> All right, this is Indiana State on the return. And a nice return at that as coming into the game to make that return was Warren English Malone. Seeing his first turn, return of 2007 for Indiana State. And we have another penalty flag. And it's going to be against on the play. Southern Illinois which is their first penalty of the afternoon. Yeah, that play was over. Personal foul, number 13, on a kicking team. 15-yard penalty, first and 10. I'm just going to make an assumption here that Kyle Walker, number 13 of Southern Illinois, might be in trouble over at the Southern Illinois bench right now. Yes. <laughs> you know, if he was playing pro football, he might get fined. But right now, you know, what are you going to find a college kid? You know, he can't have extra fries at, at, at lunch. <laughs> or, or how do you do that? Very good point. <laughs> They tack on 
some yardage off the penalty, and so the Sycamores with their best field possession of the afternoon, starting at the 47-yard line of Southern Illinois, and on their first carry, it goes for no yards as Justin Collins, the backup running back, was there running, and in on the stop was Chauncey Mixon, who got his first start last week. I don't know if you saw this or not, Dan, but in his first start last week, 11 tackles, two sacks, and a near interception in that game last week for Southern Illinois. That, that's quite a way to start things out as a sophomore. It definitely start. is. I mean, to come in and establish yourself like that, he's uh, got, I believe, 30 tackles on the season right now, so he's one of the leaders of this team, and he's just, just started. Riley Murphy is going to have to tuck it under, and he is going to be sacked as the aforementioned Murphy Chauncey Murphy Mixon there on the stop as he picks up his third sack of 2007. Only a sophomore. He's got a bright future for Jerry Kill's club at that linebacker position. And you know that Jerry Kill likes the linebackers. They may not be heavyweights, 210, 215 pounds, but they're playmakers and they can go sideline to sideline. And that's all you need. Nowadays, the games is about so much about speed. Third and 12 now for Indiana State from the Southern Illinois. 49-yard line, a three-man rush for the Salukis, and now Murphy feeling the pressure, and he's hit and throws the ball out of bounds, and Indiana State wanted a rough in the passer call, which we saw earlier on Nick Hill of Southern Illinois. No penalty flag, and it'll be a fourth down for Indiana State. Watch the linebackers here for Southern. Just in a zone situation, but look how once that quarterback leaves the pocket, those, those linebackers almost sense like red meat, and they just go after the quarterback like like they're hungry for him. And, and that's what you want to teach your linebackers. That's the kind of instinct you want to have for linebackers, the guys that do their job and then make plays in addition to it. This is Corey Lindsey, punt return for Southern Illinois, and he gets to the 22-yard line. We take a break here. Third quarter action, it's all Saluki. Brian Jackson just get absolutely popped. But he's back up and he's back battling for Indiana State. Yeah, I think he liked that ball, that pitch a little bit better than that swing route that he tried to catch earlier. <laughs> he's taking some hits, but he's bouncing up though. He's a tough kid. Second and two now for Indiana State. Looks like McCulley and Collins in the backfield for Indiana State. Wow. What can you say about that? <laughs> Mike McElroy. I mean, you can't teach it any better than that, Dana. Textbook tackle, uh, kind of a picture of your quarterback leaving you out to dry right there on the option. Sometimes as a quarterback, you just got to take that hit. You see that guy bearing down on your running back, save him the injury and maybe slide tackle or something, but great textbook mm. tackle by McElroy. Good job on the sidelines there. That was perfect. 65-10, Southern Illinois late in this third quarter, leading Indiana State as you see McElroy there on that last tackle for Southern. This is a third and five. Murphy feeling the pressure, trying to escape it, and now he'll just have to throw the ball out of bounds before he's sacked. And you can tell Riley's frustrated at that stage. No time at all as there was huge pressure by that Saluki defense. Huge pressure, and the fact is, is that he only had two wide receivers out. So you have max protection and you're still not able to hold off this Saluki defense. It's got to be frustrating for both of those quarterbacks. So Indiana State back to punt once again. Chris Johansson standing at his own 10-yard line. He gets off a nice high kick. This is Corey Lindsey. He's been returning for Southern here in the second half and dodges a couple of tacklers. And then he's finally wrapped up at the 41-yard line is Henry Lemons on the tackle for Indiana State. Let's take a look at some of the games going on today in the Gateway Football Conference. Right now, first quarter, North Dakota State, we mentioned them. They'll be a team that will be in the gateway next year, taking on 17th-ranked Western Illinois, and it's a three-point lead for North Dakota State. Later on today, Northern Iowa, the fourth-ranked team, taking on Illinois State. Of course, Illinois State coming off that loss against the University of Missouri last week. 
Also later on, Missouri State taking on 10th ranked Youngstown State. That's a big game. Yes, it is. Penguins 5 0 against Missouri State in Ohio. That game played in Youngstown, Ohio. Some interesting numbers as we're seeing the Salukis add up on the scoreboard here today. Here you see the highest single game point totals in the Gateway Football Conference. Illinois State with 70 against Indiana State just a couple of years ago. 68 points a couple of times, which also involved Indiana State, Missouri State back in 1991. Actually, Coach Rates was here in Indiana State at that time. 66 points put on the board. That happened a couple of times, including Indiana State and Southern Illinois. The trick was turned, and then Southern against Western Illinois, and then, of course, 65 today by Southern against Indiana State. As we mentioned in the outset, Southern Illinois was already the highest scoring team in the nation, averaging just under 49 points a game. Obviously, that average is going to rise just a little bit here today, Dana. Yes, it is. And I mean, and the game is still young. We're still in the third quarter with a little bit left, one minute and 15 seconds left in the third quarter. So you have a fourth quarter. They might be able to surpass that record. And off goes to Kareem, and he'll make his way out to the 47-yard line for a six-yard game for Southern Illinois. Salukis. Started out 5-0 and last year before they suffered their first defeat back in 2006. And it's going to be 5-0 and for Jerry Kills Club again, heading into that big game next week against Youngstown State. Second and four now, Joe Alaria. He is the freshman, and he is the quarterback here in the second half for the Salukis. And he will swing it out for a first down. No penalty flags on the receiving end was Ryan Beeler. He is the senior wide receiver from... Taylorville, Illinois. And Ryan Beeler does a great job. He's, he's caught two or three of these passes already on the swing routes, and he's shown that he's a tough enough kid to go up in that hole into the gauntlet and make the play downfield and hold on to the ball, taking big hits each time. Hey, you get some of these guys that are second, even third string guys that are out here in the second half. This is their chance to showcase, especially for the head coach, that, hey, I can play also at this level, isn't it? Exactly. You take advantage of the opportunities. They don't come very often, especially at the wide receiver position, because you may get in a game in a situation like this where it's a blowout, but you may not throw the ball anymore. So you're just downfield blocking the whole game. And you don't get to show off those skills that, that warrant more playing time. So. You have to credit Beeler for taking advantage of that. We head to the fourth quarter. Southern Illinois is up. Second and seven facing the Salukis as we head into the final 15 minutes here at Terre Haute. Salukis up big. Joe Alaria is the quarterback for Southern on this second and seven. And it's a play action pass and Alaria in the flat, and he finds Beeler once again, and it is a first down. Let's go back down on the field and check in with Mick Schaefer. Mick. Guys, thanks very much. Joined by Joel Samberski, all-time TD, completions, yardage leader, a bunch of other stats, too. I just found the time to mention. All-time leader in length of hair, I believe, by quarterback at, at SIU. Point. At one point. That was no borderline one. mullet, was it not? <laughs> it was. Might have crossed that line. It was. Um, you know, now I'm in the working world, and the mullet doesn't uh, <laughs> doesn't do much for you. You're all you're all nice uh, cut and clean and everything, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I'm trying. We're looking at the mullet now, taking a look at some of your plays oh, back no. uh, from uh, 02 to 05 for okay. Southern Illinois. What do you what do you think back uh, upon those years? When uh, what kind of memories those bring to mind? Well, it was, it was the best I've ever had. I mean, we were at one point, believe it or not, we were like in Indiana State. And, um, rebuilding. I mean, my first year we were one and ten, and then now we're at where we're at today. And um, it's an amazing accomplishment. It's because people believed in Coach Kill, and it's just an amazing accomplishment. You're in the real world now, huh? Doing yeah. broadcasting, but that's that's not your career. Tell us, uh, get us up to date. I guess no, what, no, what no. you're doing. I, I don't have a clue what I'm doing over on the sideline. <laughs> I'm, I'm, that makes two of us. Yeah. Okay. Um, when when uh, when I quit playing football for the for the Slokies. Um, Mike Reese, who's a longtime broadcaster uh, for River Radio, does all the play-by-play -play on the radio, um, asked me to do uh, some sideline stuff. So I'm, I'm doing that, and I'm enjoying it. And it allows me, it gives me great seats, as you know. And uh, we get to watch 
you know, real good games. Um, and uh, so it's a lot of fun. But I don't know what I'm doing. That ain't my, that's not my majors. But recently engaged. Do you know what you're doing there? No, I don't have a clue what I'm doing there. No, it's, it's great. I, uh, Samantha got engaged. Uh, Samantha and I got engaged. And she's a golfer at SIU. So I get to brag to all my buddies that she can whip their butt in golf. And, um, and you know, made a home in Carbondale. It's a, it's a great place to live. It's a great place to go to school and to, and to have a career. And, uh, settle down, so that's kind of where we're at right now. Joel, you're obviously on a, a number of juggernaut teams uh, in Carbondale, but this one kind of ranks up there with 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 that those teams so far. Uh, four and zero going on five and zero right now. Sized up this uh, this year's Saluki squad. Uh, it, it could be one of the best. Yeah. I mean, it really could. I mean, Coach Kill knows how to recruit. Nick Hill's doing a great job. Offensive line is just stellar. Defense is is. I mean, the the, the amount of turnovers they're creating is unbelievable. Um, it's. Uh, I, I really think uh, this this coming week at Youngstown State or Youngstown State's coming to play at at, uh, at Southern. I think that's going to be probably the biggest test, and, and we'll really see uh, how good of a Saluki football team this is. All right, we'll let you get back to work. Thanks for the time. Thanks, man. And I want to tell Dana, and hey, I've been a fan for a long time. You know, I'm Carbondale, Illinois. Not a lot of Chiefs fans, so it's it's. Uh, I've been a fan. Dana needs a fan. He needs a fan. Okay. <laughs> well, I've been one. So. Joel, thanks very much. All right, man. Thank you. All right, Mick, thank you so much. And as you saw in that pass play, Elliot Thomas coming up with his first pick for Indiana State. We see it once again here, Danon. Hey, this is a great job. He's got a lot of time now. At that point, that's just youth in motion right there. Quarterback, he has a lot of space in front of him. Instead of trying to force it downfield and make the play downfield, use his legs, get down, get down the sideline, out of bounds maybe, live for another down. That's just something that he's going to learn, but it's going to take time. Chiefs fan in Carbondale, Illinois. Hey, they're, they're special. You're universal, man. Hey, there's special people all over this world. You know that, right? Either they're Hawkeyes or they're Chiefs fans or I don't know what they are. Riley Murphy, or excuse me, Dowdell, <laughs> in a quarterback, and he'll keep it himself and get to the 29-yard line for a nine-yard pickup for Indiana State. And Joel Samgurski, I mean, he, he rewrote the record books at Southern Illinois. I think the most unbelievable thing about it is the smooth transition from Samburski to Nick Hill over the last couple of years over in Southern Illinois. I tell you what, that it almost is like the version of USC quarterbacks yeah. and Carson Palmer and my, Matt Leinart and now Booty there. I mean, these guys are able to step in and make plays and they're, they're learning from each other and that's what you want to have in a program. Donnell's pass is broken up by Mac, Mike McElroy. He's been all over the field here in the second half. Backup defensive back for the Salukis, and the incompletion forces a third and one now for Indiana State. Well, Sam Bursky must be a great kid. He's from Liberty, Missouri. I believe I even uh, covered him in high school at Liberty High School, but, uh, you know, if he's a Chiefs fan, he has a glow around him. I can, I can see it right now. McCulley will get the handoff, diving straight ahead, and he's going to be very close to a first down. I think he's got it, Dana. Just pounding away to get into the zone of uh, just trying to make some positive things happen, finish the game on a high note, be able to walk into the locker room or go into film session and say, hey, first three quarters, they beat us up and down the field, but we finished strong and we didn't quit. That's kind of... Uh, what this Sycamore team wants to do from now on until the end of the game. We just saw Joel Samburski as he talked with Mick Schaefer. He patrols the sidelines for the radio broadcast with Mike Reese and company on the Southern Illinois Carbondale football broadcast. And Collins, he's got a lot of work in today as the backup running back with the absence of Tony West. And Collins gets his way out to the 31 yard line. Chauncey Mixon again there on the stop for Southern Illinois. He's adding up the tackles to his ledger here this afternoon against Indiana State. He's a good-looking linebacker. I'll tell you what, he's got a great career ahead of him at Southern Illinois. Oh, he definitely does. He's already shown he's a ball hawk, that he can make plays from sideline to sideline. He's just got to get that game time uh, readiness and be able to, to get those 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 plays under his belt to be able to develop as a complete linebacker. Well, they swing it out to Brian Jackson and an absolutely tremendous play by Larry Taylor. He's the senior from Newport News, Virginia. Let's see this again, Dana. Hmm. This is a great job of him recognizing what's happening before the play unfolds. In a zone situation, he's supposed to back out, have the back quarter. 
but uses his instincts to make the play right at the line of scrimmage. Third and 10 now for Indiana State from their own 30-yard line. Trying to get some points on the board here in the second half, down by 55 against Southern. This is Dowdell redirecting his wide receiver, and then he overthrows him. That's Jeremy Robinson, the intended receiver. And there on the coverage among them was Larry Taylor again for SIU. You got to appreciate Dodell and what he's doing back there. You can see on several occasions when he's dropped back, he realizes that he's not going to have a whole bunch of time up in front of him. He's pointing and directing wide receivers to get to a position that might that's open. He, the, the play calling or the route that's uh, initially set in the huddle may not be working for them. The defense is playing strong, but he's directing traffic, trying to find that crease to make the play. Chris Johansson back in for Indiana State. And this is a nice high driving kick, and Lindsey's going to call a fair catch. And he will grab it at the 30-yard line. Fourth quarter action here. Southern up by 55 over seven. Welcome back to Terre Haute, Indiana, as we open up the Gateway Football Conference season. As you see, the sixth ring Salukis all over Indiana State here today in Terre Haute Municipal Stadium, along with Mick Schaefer and Dana Hughes. Scott Warman, glad to have you alongside. It is the first and 10 on this possession for the 30 yard line for Southern Illinois. And now the third string quarterback, Chris Deeker, is in, the freshman from Topeka, Kansas. Everybody's getting a little bit of work in today here, Dana. Yes, they are. And I tell you what, that's how you develop a program is when you have quality teams like the Salukis do have now that you can get ahead quickly and allow your other teammates to get into the game, get some quality play time, get some experience. And then you never know, this guy or, or can will be able to jump in in the next two years and make plays just like Nick Hill is. Yeah, you got the two freshmen, this this young man and Joe Alaria as well. And Dicker's going to take it himself, and he gets hit at the 33-yard line for a gain of three yards. And that's what Joel Samberski, when he was talking to Mick Schaefer earlier, was talking about, Dane, is the fact that, you know, Jerry Kill and his recruiting process, you get a guy like this from Kansas, you get some people from up in St. Louis, Missouri, you get people from Southern Illinois, you get a kid from Liberty, Missouri, like Joel Samberski. It just tells uh, a lot about how Jerry Kill is thought of in, in, in his recruiting process and the type of program that he's put together down in Carbondale. And definitely the type of program that he's building, but also the type of teams that he's playing within the conference and, and the schedule that he makes is that it shows that it's quality. Anytime you can draw people, I mean, I've seen, there are people on this roster from New Jersey and all uh, Newport News, Virginia, all across the country that are coming to these teams that are, uh, that are making some noise within this conference. So it's, it's an overall light for the whole conference. Jerry Kill's team headed to 5-0, and get ready to take on Youngstown State, as we mentioned. And Jerry, who has uh, just had a phenomenal career, seventh season, 47-30, and has 96 career wins in his illustrious college career. First punt of the day for Southern Illinois. Wonder what Coach Kill's reaction is on this. <laughs> hey, every aspect of the game needs some work. And the punt will be down at the 35 yard line. As we roll on on our Gateway Football Conference Game of the Week, Jerry Kill's team up by 55. Back here on the Gateway Conference football game of the week. Mick Schaefer, Scott Warman, Dane and Hughes is Indiana State. Retakes possession here. The pitch goes outside. Tackle made after a gain of nine or ten. Look, it's, it's sideline play by play. Who knew? Uh, a couple more points on Dennis Rates, of course, the interim head coach after being the head coach here for 18 years throughout the decades of the 80s and the 90s. Now, he technically retired in June from the university. However, he still maintained his other job, which is scout for the Edmonton Eskimos, yes, of the CFL. The Eskimos, since you asked, are 5-6-1 and one this season. They're last in the CFL West. However, two straight wins as we have another ball on the ground. And it looks like it's going to go back to Southern Illinois. Get another turnover created by the Salukis. Uh, a little more on the Eskies, though. They take on the Argos this week with big, Scott and Dana, big playoff implications on the line for uh, 
Dennis Rate's other job, which is scout for a CFL team. He just loves football, loves scouting, goes down to Mississippi, goes all over the region and the country uh, looking for players for the CFL. The drive, Mick, to the Grey Cup, which will be coming up shortly for the Canadian Football League Championship. As Mick mentioned, a fumble by Indiana State. Southern recovers. They have a first and 10, spotting it at the Sycamore 43-yard line. This is Larry Warner, and he is going to make his way close to another first down. And you play in the National Football League, Dana. Did you ever get a sniff or try out up in the Canadian Football League or even think about it at all? No, I didn't. We had a couple of players that played up there. Obviously, uh, Joe Horn, who's now with the Atlanta Falcons, yeah. who, who's with the Saints, played up there, and we drafted him from there. To Mark Vanover, big-time returner back in the day for the Chiefs, played up in Canada. Uh, more and more, you're seeing people come from the Arena League and from Canadian League to try their shot in the NFL, and they're, and they're having some success. And Scott, Coach Rates actually possesses two Grey Cup rings that he never wears. In fact, the only ring he does wear is that of his retirement ring from Indiana State University. He got it uh, recently. It's a, he's beloved by this university, and he loves them. Right back, was a member of it for so long, was in fact a compliance officer here in the um, athletics department, an associate athletic director. You see the ring yeah. right there on his finger. Um, for several years after his retirement from coaching, and then, like I said, uh, retired from that job in June, only to just come back for more, I guess. <laughs> I guess. But you're right. I mean, he did have a lot of success here, Mick. It's, he was uh, ranked number one here at Terre Haute a couple of different occasions in the 80s. Deeker on the keeper, and he's going to get into the 10 yard line. Nice run and a nice fake on top of that, Dana. Yeah, he had everyone fooled on that side. You saw several blue jerseys chasing the running back down the uh, left sideline, but the quarterback did an excellent job, and that's what you want to see is a quarterback that can kind of integrate himself into the offense and be just as smooth and just as quality as the starter. You see, once again, you can see the pursuit by the Indiana State defense initially off the fake, and he gets a nice gain there to the Sycamore 10-yard line. From the shotgun on this first and goal, this is Warner. He already has one touchdown. Nice spin move. He'll get to the seven-yard line for a three-yard gain. And getting back to Dennis Rates, and I know that uh, Mick had mentioned this earlier. We talked about names like Dave McKinnis, former NFL coach, now with the Tennessee Titans, and Sean Payton, now with the New Orleans Saints. 41 different players signed NFL contracts during his tenure here at Indiana State from 82. 1997. It has been 10 years, however, since he's been a coach on the collegiate level or any level. And that's why I think it's kind of an intriguing situation, not only to see a coach fired in the middle of the season, but also bringing back a guy that hadn't been in the game technically in about 10 years, Dana. Well, that's great for them because they're not getting a newbie. They're not making a rush judgment in who they want to take over this program. They're getting a guy who has obviously cared about the program. He's, he's, he's 94 wins. He knows all the kids. He's around the situation. Uh, he's been here. And, and, and he's somebody that obviously does not want to have this job for a long period of time, and he's willing and able to step in until they can make the right decision for their future. There's Deeker on the carry for Southern. He gets inside the five down to the three-yard line as it'll be a third and goal now for Southern Illinois. As we showed you the graphic earlier, 70 points is a conference record for points scored in a game. And the Salukis are just a mere three yards away from eclipsing that mark of 70 points in the history of the Gateway Football Conference. This is a third down carry. This is Warner, and what a great tackle. Terrific open field tackle there by Indiana State's Quentin Scott. This is the second time that the Salukis have been in the goal zone and they've come away with nothing. Actually, a third time. The first time uh, they had a fumble by Randall, and now this time they're continuing to move backwards. It's not something you want to see in your football team. It doesn't matter for Coach Kill if it's your backups or not. You want to see these guys take advantage of the opportunity and getting that ball in the end zone. Kyle Doherty here to attempt a 25-yard field goal. Only a freshman, and he has been a very busy young man here this afternoon in Terre Haute, and he is absolutely perfect. No, he missed it. He just missed the field goal. And so the first miss of the afternoon, and so the Salukis 
lead remains at 65-10 on the missed field goal attempt by Doherty. Very rare that, that, that you miss this type of field goal. It's not very far, but yet he just kind of pushes it out there. Just, wow, that's, that's pretty darn close there, pretty partner. Pretty darn close. <laughs> uh, and they didn't give it to him. And hey, you know what? The kickers have a job that they're expected to be perfect every single time. It's the only job in the, in the whole, on the whole football field that it has that pressure. It's one of the, uh, there's our camera angle there, and I think it's pretty much dead center. You can see where uh, that was, as you mentioned, Dana, and it's pretty darn close. We saw Coach Kill showing a little bit of frustration. It's about the only frustration we've seen from Coach Kill here this afternoon in their dominance against Indiana State. And, and we, we spoke about it earlier, Scott, and what do you talk about after the game? What's your post-game uh, kind of reaction as a coach of a 65 to 10 game? And then tomorrow or Monday in your film study, what do you talk about? What do you go over? And I guarantee you, Coach Kill, one of the points that he'll make is nailing, putting the final nails in the coffin, yeah. finishing the game when you have a team down, pushing them down deeper into the ground. And right now, although they're scoring these many points, the defense is playing strong, but the offense, second string and third stringers, are not taking advantage of that opportunity to put that final nail in the coffin. Indiana State will get it back off the missed field goal opportunity at their own 20-yard line, and the freshman getting a lot of work, Charles Dowdell, for Indiana State. Penalty flags on this keeper by Dowdell as he gets to the 29-yard line. I want to touch on Coach Jerry Kill. Talked about his great record, two 10-win seasons at Southern Illinois as the penalty is going to be on Indiana State. He was the 2004 Eddie Robinson Coach of the Year, made the Elite Eight in 05, and of course last year as well. But the most important thing to Jerry Kill is his cancer foundation. Of course, he was had some kidney cancer uh, back in 2005 and actually went up to St. Louis, Danon, and uh, had uh, some help from the folks up in uh, Barnes Hospital up in St. Louis to help his kidney cancer. And with that, Jerry Kill decided to put together a foundation and they're assisting all kinds of needy people in Southern Illinois, especially those seeking cancer treatments that can't afford something like that. And uh, Jerry Kill has had tremendous success with this foundation that he started up a couple of years ago. And that's a great testament to the type of character and person that he is as well. We have two coaches, both coaches on each sideline here that are quality individuals that do things that maybe don't get as much media attention as they should. Well, Jerry Kill's kind of that, that type of person is uh, Collins was there on the carry and he's tripped up after a couple of yard gain for Indiana State. Another good open field tackle there by Southern Illinois, that time by Anthony Williams who already has a pick in today's game. Jerry Kill covering this conference for a while now. He's a guy that really just doesn't like to be in the spotlight. I can recall a couple of years ago, we, myself and Brian, uh, our Rich Ballinger, did the game down in Southern. He actually had a Caesar at the end of the game. They were ranked number one against Illinois State. Very scary situation. They had to stop the game, literally. And the next week, we're here at Indiana State doing a game against uh, Southern Illinois against Indiana State. Tracy Clays was the interim, if you will, head coach at the time. And all of a sudden, right before the kickoff, there was Jerry Kill making his mark on the football field. It, it was really impressive, and I think really emotional, especially for the Southern Illinois players and their fans. Yeah, and as a player, as a former player, you always wonder. There are times throughout your career, whether it's in college or in the, in the pro ranks, you, all, you often wonder how much does your coach care about you or care about the team, or is it a business, or is it just a job, or what have you. And when you see acts like that of Jerry Kill coming out, obviously right out of his sick bed, you have to be able to, to get emotional and, and allow that to lift you up and understand that you have a coach that really cares about you personally. Third and 13 for Indiana State from their own 12-yard line. Odell from the shotgun. And he's feeling more pressure like he has most of the game and he'll overthrow his intended receiver downfield. That's Raphael Price. As we see Jerry Kill there on the sidelines once again going to 5-0 and for the second consecutive season. And his sixth-ranked Salukis obviously will be at least number six as uh, they get set to take on Youngstown State next week down in Carbondale. The great thing about this situation, if they stay sixth, 
I mean, they're a quality six. It's not about a preseason ranking that they're just kind of scraping by and holding their own. I mean, they're scoring 40 and 50 points a game, over, four, over 50 points at this point per game. There's not much more they can do to move up. All they got to do is continue to win. This is Lindsay on the return, almost lost it. Made a nice job in the recovery. Now look at the pursuit by the Indiana State punt coverage team. And he'll be run out of bounds in Indiana State territory. It's all Salukis today here in Terre Haute. Welcome back to Municipal Stadium and our Gateway Football Conference Game of the Week. All Salukis here this afternoon in Terre Haute. Under three minutes left to play here. Salukis going to 5-0. and oh. We want to thank Kevin Shake and our entire Metro Sports crew for another great job, as always, by the crew. And on this first down, this is Kareem getting a big hole. Can he go the distance? He's at the 20, 15, 10, 5, diving forward. Did he get in? The referee gets Knocked out. run over as well, and there's no official indication as of yet. And he looks like he's pretty seriously injured there, Dana. Yes, the other, the other referees are looking at him for, for guidance on whether or not it was a touchdown, and he's still, still down. Kareem, the junior running back, went up the middle and then shot outside as we see it once again, and we'll see the collision with him and the referee there on the sideline. No, I'm sorry, it was the Indiana State player that came in to try to come in on the tackle. That was 95, John Goodrich, I apologize. That's an extremely dangerous position to be in as a, as a referee for football. We, we, we've seen some hits here today, and unfortunately it's also included the officials today too. Hey, everybody's fair game to those guys in uniform. It gets hot out there. It's two minutes left in the game. You know, you never know what's going to happen. You just hope, that, hope for the best and hope that guys, if they're injured, they're not seriously injured. So Darius Middlebrooks earlier in the game. While Mick Schaefer was talking to Joel Samberski, knocked the helmet off of the running back for Southern Illinois as well. First and goal for the Salukis again at the Indiana State one. And well, that was just too easy. Richard White, the freshman running back, gets into the end zone for a touchdown. 71 points put on the board for Southern Illinois. That is a single game point record in league history, Dana Hughes. Hey, and the way that they've done it has been phenomenal defensively, offensively, special teams, all three game have hit and put allowed points on the board. So you can't ask much more of a team. It doesn't matter what's going on on the field. It doesn't matter what you've done in mistakes. The fact remains you put 70, one, 72 points on the board in a quality way. It's all Salukis today, folks. Mick Schaefer, Dana Hughes, Scott Warman with you. It's all Southern Illinois, as you can tell. 72 points put on the board. And there you see the great performances, highest single game point totals in Gateway Football Conference history, dating back to 1985 when the conference got underway. And we're seeing history here today, folks. 72 by Southern Illinois. Previously, two years ago, Illinois put 70 on the board against this very same Indiana State Sycamore team. Yeah, this is a quality football game, and you opened up and said it's all Saluki right now, but it's been all Saluki all game long. It's not like it's been a burst within the second half or a couple of penalties or a couple of turnovers here or there. It's been consistently throughout the game that this team has played quality football. That is Warren English Malone getting his first kickoff return of the afternoon for Indiana State. And we have more history as the Salukis, 62 points is the most lopsided victory in Gateway football history. Previously, it was Southern's 53-point win over Western Illinois back in 2004 at 66 to 13. So Jerry Kill has definitely made his mark with his football teams over the years, including this year, in the uh, record books yes, in the Gateway has. football conference. He's done a great job of turning around this program and keeping it very steady. And obviously, he's looking to do some damage in the FCF playoff series and championship series this year. So, the sky's the limit. McCulley with his longest carry of the game as he gets out to the 21 yard line for a 41 yard line, excuse me, for a 21 yard gain for Indiana State. Under two minutes left. 
here at Terre Haute. And this will be a first in 10. 509 total yards of offense for Southern Illinois, which isn't their season high. They had 586 last week, uh, Danon in their victory. And Dowdell will get the carry out to the 46-yard line. And the balanced way that they're doing it is the, is the incredible part. I mean, you may have teams like Hawaii with Colt Brennan that's throwing the ball all over the lot, being able to put a lot of yards on the board, but they're doing it passing. SIU is doing it with the run game, Nick Hill obviously with the pass game, and then they're getting extremely quality play from their defense with turnovers and turnovers that are turning into points. Well, a lot of turnovers. Not a lot of yardage for Indiana State here in the second half. Only 32 yards of offense in the second half. We talk a lot about the offense for Southern Illinois, but their defense obviously has done the job as well. Exactly. They're, this defense has been stellar. Any ball that's been thrown downfield has been either intercepted or had an opportunity to be intercepted. And, and it's just a phenomenal game all around for the Saluki team. Couple of blemishes though in the second half. They had a penalty. Yeah. And they had and a the turnover and a missed field goal. <laughs> but other than that, it was uh, as Dana mentioned, picture perfect for the Salukis here this afternoon in Terre Haute to open up this 2007 Gateway Football Conference season. Last play of the game, Dowdell loses the ball and there's a scrum at the 47-yard line. And who's got it? It looks like uh, Indiana State recovers, but that will mean nothing, obviously, as we have reached the final of this one. Jerry Kill and the Southern Illinois Salukis win it 72 to 10. And that is a conference record, as we mentioned previously, 70 points was recently the highest point scored in a Gateway Football Conference game. Just a one-sided affair, and what a output by Jerry Cl uh, Kills Club. Yes, it has been. I mean, I'll tell you what, they, they were behind the eight ball. The Sycamores were behind the eight ball, changing coaches. Uh, just a lot of unsuredness that's going on with this program at this point. They showed up, they tried to fight, they just came upon a bigger a bigger feat, a bigger dog in the fight, and, and the Saluki stepped up and made play after play throughout the first half, eight possessions, eight scores and 55 to 10 at halftime. So it was a great job all around. Well, we see Jerry Kill talking it over with uh, Coach Rates of uh, Indiana State and uh, Coach Rates still trying to get things turned around here at Indiana State. Next up, they're at home. They'll take on Western Illinois. And you know, he doesn't have very many positives to get out of this, but obviously he wants to keep his team fighting and trying to regroup this whole process here at Terre Haute, Indiana. And speaking of Coach Jerry Kill, let's go down. And Mick Schaefer's with the winning head coach. Guys, thanks very much. Coach Kill, 72 points. Cheney, Kansas ever get that high even? Oh, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've been in Cheney, Kansas. But uh, if anybody's watching from there, I'll tell them all hi today. Southwestern College now even. But uh, just uh, talk about uh, today's performance. You guys are 5-0 and as well. And two big games looming, I guess, in the future in Youngstown State and Northern Iowa the next two weeks. No question about that. we got a, a huge one at home. It's homecoming. And we uh, expect a huge crowd to be great football game and uh, you know uh, it, it just gets tougher and tougher in the gateway we understand that and hopefully we got out of this healthy and maybe we'll get a couple back. I was going to say at the very least two in the last five games you got to see a lot of guys out there in the field. Yeah, no question and, and you know you're going to have to have depth in the gateway because it's so physical of a conference so hopefully we built some depth today we played everybody we had and and uh, you know that's a good thing. Coach congratulations we appreciate the time. Thank you very much I appreciate it. All right, Southern Illinois with a commanding performance here today, 72 to 10, as they win the Gateway Football Conference opener. Next week, we're in Springfield, Missouri, as the Missouri State Bears will be hosting Illinois State kickoff at 2 p.m. Central Time. For Mick Schaefer, Dana Hughes, and our entire Metro Sports crew, thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed our Gateway Football Conference Game of the Week. So long from Terre Haute.